It should be said that I'm dreadfully and cripplingly terrified by spiders. This is important later on. Even if it's only the size of my thumbnail, I can't even go near one. I used to admire my sister for being the bravest person ever. She'd kill those things without hesitation, as I hyperventilated and squirmed on my bed. Okay, maybe that last part is over-exaggerated, but I think you catch my point, and it can't be stressed enough. Spiders terrify me. Full-blown panic road. To get to the actual story, when I was 10, my family was invited to stay at my aunt and uncle's new place to stay for the weekend. The drive there was always a few hours, but we made it a little later than planned. Once we arrived to their house, it was nothing but darkness covering the streets. The only visible things that the very dim porch lights could illuminate. Of course, this made things very difficult to see, much in the way of little details, and my eyesight is bad enough in the daytime. As we were walking across the street to her front lawn and driveway, I noticed two tall pieces of wood on either side, with a width no more than that of your average doorway. They were stuck at the front lawn to the side, not entirely sure what purpose they served, but there they were. Per usual, I found myself separated from my family, as they were still gathering their things and getting out of the car while I was stretching after the drive. Finally, my mom and grandpa told me to come along as it was time to go in and greet everyone. They began walking ahead of me, and so I started following. I looked around a bit more to adjust my eyes and then started making my way to the front door. Walking straight toward those two wooden stakes. I would have walked past through them, but the moment I got right up to them, literally about to step forward, I heard something behind me. A woman's voice yelling urgently, At Club Silencio, stop! Do not walk through! Move around! At first I brushed this off, despite looking over my shoulder and yelling hello like some cliché scene in a horror film. I figured it was my mom's voice, but it wasn't her tone. And it definitely wasn't my grandma's, they were both inside at this point. When I walked in, I asked my mom why she yelled to me to stop walking, and to especially not go through the stakes. To which she said she had no idea what I was talking about, nor did anyone else there hear anything or call out my name. Mostly, everyone was asleep. The next day, when I walked out of the house, I definitely entered a scene from my own personal, based on a true story horror film. The property they were renting had a huge, huge infestation of brown recluse and black widow spiders. Everywhere you looked, there would be at least five or six giant spiders hanging down from trees, spider webs everywhere. Spiders on windows, on tops of cars, but mostly just all over the bushes and trees. And some dead ones on the ground, probably from being stepped on. And what was stuck right between those two wooden stakes? At my eye level, low enough to wrap around my face and hair, a gorgeously spun huge spider web with one of the most ghastly, freakishly large spiders I've ever seen at the center, with an equally sized, just as nightmarish looking spider a little closer to the edge. Had I not heard that voice that night, I would have walked head first into a couple of disturbing, poisonous arachnids in the middle of darkness. I get chills just thinking about this. I had just returned from my job at a theatre, which is about 20 minutes away from my house, and had already let the dogs out to do their business. We had come back in and I went to feed the cats, of which there were three. As I had the front door open with the metal security door shut, 
as I just ordered a pizza. As I turned my back to the door, I was walking to the cat area when I heard a loud bang. I turned and saw that the metal door is shaking and making a sound like someone is pounding on it. As I'm looking right at it, no one there. Then a mug of coffee flies off of this chest to the right of me. I see this happen, not hear it. It just flew the fuck off that chest and shatters on the floor. Next, these four oxygen tanks and the, the, the husband father of the household of the house used as he was close to passing and soon did pass November 1st of this year fly across the room knocking down two of those portable TV side tables with it. Then the cats start hissing and growling while the two dogs are cowering behind me in the kitchen and there were loud bangs and thuds throughout the house. However, it wasn't an earthquake because I felt no shaking and no rumbling and nothing else was moving around or disturbed. Needless to say, I was really scared and got chills. I called my mom and she told me to leave. I called the owners and explained the situation and I didn't feel safe and I didn't and drove back to my apartment to return tomorrow. The other night, around 10 or 11, my mom and I were watching a movie. It had been raining hard, so there was basically just a white noise coming from outside. As I'm watching the movie, for some reason or another, the whistler popped into my head. Then I remembered the actual whistle with its inexplicably chilling, distinct tone. Then I heard the faintest sound of the whistle but it was so faint that I thought it was just in my head. Kind of like when you can hear and see things in your head, but there's no actual noise. But then it got a little louder from outside. I kind of had a moment where I was struck cold and in shock with disbelief. There's no way I'm actually hearing it. It must be the movie. The next one is louder and now I know I'm not imagining it. So I pause halfway through the whistle and I turn to my mom. It ends. A moment later, another whistle. This time very loud, as if whoever is whistling is standing outside the window, which was open. I literally felt a jolt go through me and I just yelled, holy shit, did you just hear that? And my mom said something along the line of, yeah, that whistling sound. I thought it was in the movie. Then goes on to mimic the whistle. This legit gave me chills and freaked me out. Even creepier is how it just stopped the moment I called attention to it and muted the TV. And since we live in an apartment complex, there are constantly people walking around outside that you can hear. But when the whistling stopped, it was just silence. There wasn't any sound of movement, but I wasn't going near the damn window. I just sat there and stared at it. Thankfully, the legend states that if you hear the whistle loud and clear, that means he's far away. When it's quiet or in the distance, he's close. Actually, that makes it even creepier, because that means those hushed ones I heard meant it was somewhere close during that time. Also, why did it happen to start right after the whole whistler story just randomly popped in my head? I think I'm losing my mind, but my mom heard it. For the record, I'm not a religious person, but I do have my beliefs. This instance is one reason that I have a certain faith and hope that there is something on the other side. I was in my early 20s going through the worst time in my life. I was falling more into substance abuse and coming to terms with some childhood trauma and resulting post-traumatic stress disorder. I also began to have seizures and my mental health was beginning to decline. 
One night, I leave my former friend's house. It was about a 20 minute drive to get home. I was sober, but drained. I may have smoked some weed earlier in the day, but that was all. I felt utterly hopeless. I began breaking down, sobbing while driving. Though I was raised in a Christian household, at that time I really struggled with it and wasn't a believer, definitely not a Christian. But I was open-minded. I became so desperate, I finally started speaking out loud, pleading with whatever God or higher power was out there to please give me a sign. If I didn't get a sign that night, I was dead set on committing suicide. I really had nothing to live for during that time. At least it felt that way. I'm pleading and begging and crying the whole drive, but no sign. I keep saying that if I don't get a sign by the time I'm home, then I'll be checking out. I just need something to show me there is hope and that there was some kind of purpose to my being alive. I finally get to my house and while still crying, I turn off my car. The second I do this, a gorgeous ball of prismatic light appears in front of my windshield. Immediately, I just shut down in a daze. It was absolutely mesmerizing. It was comforting. It was so impossibly bright, but it didn't hurt my eyes. For a brief moment, I felt the most peace I had ever felt. What felt like five minutes was really only about a few seconds, but it stopped me in my tracks. I immediately break down again, but feel this weight lift off me. I keep saying thank you. It took me forever to compose myself to walk in. I really can't explain this other than it was truly a sign. Sure, it could have been a hallucination, but I've never hallucinated like that before, even during a psychotic break. And if it was a coincidence, then holy shit, it lined up perfectly. And it just doesn't feel like it was. While I'm still not religious, I do have a certain relationship with my own higher power, or whatever is watching over me. But I'll never forget this moment, ever. And I really hope to be engulfed in that light again someday, when I pass on. Before I explain, I swear I'm not in the midst of psychosis or hallucinating or anything. This only happens when I'm by myself. One day, I was home and noticed a bee on the doorframe that leads to my back patio. It wasn't moving at all, and when I tried to get it to fly away, it had no reaction. Didn't think much about it, and went back inside. This was around 11 a.m. I go out again an hour or two later, and there it is again. Same spot, not moving. It was in the same exact spot. I thought maybe it was dead or had some kind of parasite or something, but it just stayed still. I even got up close to it and blew on it, and nothing. It stayed in that one spot the entire day. I didn't want to kill it because I don't mind bees. It's just wasps that are the assholes. I come out at night and it's still there. But when I came back around the corner after my sig, it was finally gone. I'm on my break at work having a cig on the sidewalk, just sitting down on my phone. A random bee just flies over to me and lands on the ground right in front of me. Once it landed, it just stayed in one spot facing me. I blow on it again and nothing. It didn't try to fly at me or around me, it just stayed in one place. I got up to walk away and it still didn't move. But when I walked to the door of my work, it followed me and then landed on the door frame and just sat there again. I get into my car around midnight to run to the gas station. And as I'm driving, another bee just flies up into my face and then lands on the window. I roll the window down, but nothing. I had to stop my car, open my door, and I gently just touched it and it wouldn't move, but then eventually flew off. 
Just now, I go out for a smoke, and the first thing I see is a bee landing on the chair I always sit in. But then it flew over and landed on the actual ashtray, and just sat there. So I went to the front porch. So, I don't know if this means anything at all. I've been trying to research what bees represent spiritually, so I don't know how else to research this because it's just so bizarre, and I've never heard of this phenomena happening. Usually bees will just fly around me and you shoo them away or whatever. So I've never seen one just sit still for a whole day in one spot or in front of me at work or how it's even got into my car since I don't leave the windows down or anything. Plus, I think it's a bit unusual for a bee to be out and about during the night. What the hell could any of this mean? If anything, it's just strange. For context, I live in a small village in the country parts of a small European country. The most popular high school in my area also had a special needs children program. And in it was this nice guy who was a bit on the special side, but he was very nice and got along with everyone. Let's call him Jay. I also had a really good childhood friend. Let's call him M whose family bought land in this village, and that land was right next to Jay's house. M's family bought land with a house, tore everything except the foundation and cellar attached to it down, and built a new house on the foundations. M's family was a bit notorious because they got a lot of money from some shady, unproven business, so they had a reputation that they only care about money. The family had a lot of infighting, alcohol addiction, divorce, etc. So there definitely was a lot of negative energy in that house. M repeatedly mentioned throughout our childhood how he had constant nightmares since they moved in. He had to sleep with lights. They heard footsteps and whispering in the house, etc. About a year ago now, M's parents divorced and the father moved out. Since he moved out, they started hearing noises from the cellar, which still remained from the original foundation. So they decided to buy a camera to see what's going on. What they found is downright chilling. They found the special needs neighbor, Jay, who was standing completely still in the corner of the cellar. He was facing in towards the corner wall and was mumbling gibberish. When they confronted him and asked him what he was doing in their cellar, he replied only with, they were calling me, or staring towards the wall. After Jay was brought safely home, they put a padlock on their cellar. Day after day, for about two weeks after they put the lock on the cellar, Jay walked over to M's front door in the middle of the night and ringed. And when the door was open, he started pleading and begging M's mother if she unlocks the cellar because they were calling him. M and his mother moved out in the next few days and the house is now for sale. I believe it was a Saturday. My dad and I were headed to my cousin's graduation party. My dad had told me there was a neat old house now a museum, with some spooky history behind it on the way. We both love those kinds of things, so I agreed to stop and visit it. Once we got there, it was a little less than we expected. Everything was locked up, so we couldn't get a good look inside. The story behind the house, now known as Hex Hollow, goes like this. There was a local man by the name of Nelson Ramier, a powwow doctor, who was suspected of being a witch. One late night in November of 1928, two men broke into his house and beat him to death. They attempted to burn his body, but it didn't burn. To this day, there are still burn marks around the body on the floorboards of that house. Anyway, after a while of going around, taking pictures and looking around, 
I thought it might be funny if I jiggled the handle to the front door of the house. Oh, was I so, so wrong about that? I truly believe I made whatever or whoever was in that house very, very angry. That night when I got home, a really odd feeling came over me. A feeling as if I was being watched. I kept thinking about how earlier in the day at the graduation, my cousin's baby stared at me with complete terror. Along with all of that, out of the corner of my eyes, I started seeing these dark figures dart across the room. I was completely terrified and I barely got any sleep at all. I'm unsure how to describe what I saw in my dreams last night, but I'll try my best. There was an array of black and white images that replayed over and over in my head. I would wake up terrified and in tears, fall back asleep and have the same images repeat themselves. I don't exactly remember what those images were. The only thing that stood out to me is that they were black and white. The next morning, I still had this overwhelming feeling that someone was watching me. I had no idea what to do other than to go and explain it to my parents. We're a pretty religious family, so we decided to pray, and as soon as we did that, the overwhelming feeling stopped. Although I'm still unsure about some of the things that happened to me that night, I'm fairly certain of two things. One, that Mr. Raymer of some entity had attached himself to me for a short period of time. Two, that I will never ever mess with something that isn't mine, especially if it's from the deceased. My mom has owned her house for 18 years now. There have always been small, bizarre occurrences around the house, the kind that you can explain away or simply ignore. Things falling off counters or going missing, strange noises, a feeling of being watched. Footsteps down the hallway all the time. We never talked about it and I never felt scared or even had any idea that our house was actually haunted. The bathroom at the house is located at the very end of a long hallway and my bedroom is directly next to it. It was summertime and I was about 14 or 15, that age where you would stay up talking to your friends on the phone all night. I was on the phone with my best friend, it was 4am, when I distinctly heard footsteps running down the hallway, into the bathroom, and the bathroom light clicks on. Immediately, I get up to check out what's going on, thinking if one of my younger sisters is running to the bathroom at 4am, obviously something's wrong. Maybe 10 seconds elapsed before I look into the bathroom. There's nobody in there and the light is on. I check on my sisters and my mom. Everybody in the house is sleeping like the dead. I'm honestly horrified and my friend on the phone experienced the whole thing with me. The next day, I told my mom. She tells me that she knows the house is haunted by a little boy in a red sweater because she has seen him herself running down the hallway. Years later, my stepdad on one end of the hallway and my mom on the other, they see him again, the boy in the red sweater. He yells like a child playing and runs down the hallway into the bathroom and he disappears. Something about this is inherently sad. The idea of a child stuck in a purgatorial loop. What was he running from? What was he running to? Who is he? Or who was he? What happened to him? Hi, so I work overnight in a funeral home. My shift starts at 7 p.m. and I get off at 6 a.m. We've had some creepy things happen and I am loving it. I wanted to share it all with somebody, but didn't know who. Here are a few of the things. This one happens quite often. Outside of the prep room, the place in the funeral home where we embalm bodies, 
we will hear footsteps pacing the hallway. At any given point, there are no more than four people in the building on a normal night. So for two people to be in the prep room and hear this while everybody else is out on first calls would rule out on the footsteps belonging to anybody. This one also happens maybe two or three times a week. The door in my office will slam shut. The other day, for example, I walked through the office door after getting a drink from our break room. I went to our dressing area and the door literally slammed shut behind me. It also happens when I'm at my desk and totally alone in the funeral home. The hallway outside my office with the door that slams shut, I can also hear footsteps pacing back and forth. I tend to just close my office door when I'm working so I don't have to hear it all. Back to the prep room, one night I was chatting with two other co-workers outside the prep room. We had just finished embalming some people and were talking a bit of a break before cleaning up and disinfecting and sterilizing everything. We were all standing around outside the door and hear something hit the far wall of the prep room and then hit the ground. Me being me, I went to investigate and it was our trocar button tool. But the last person to use it, we all saw him set the tool down on his prep table, about 30 feet away from the wall that it hits before dropping to the ground. Another thing in the prep room that I didn't personally experience, but my coworker on the other shift swears by this, that he was prepping somebody while he was alone in the building and the phone on the wall started dialing out. The phone dialed a funeral home in Missouri. The same funeral home that the person on the prep table was going to be shipped to. Last one, this happened last night actually. We have industrial yellow cabinets that our flammable fluids are stored in. On top of those cabinets are plastic bins that we will put babies in before going in the cooler. That way they can be more protected. Anyways, all of our bins fell off the top of the cabinet. There were three of us in the building. I was coming around the corner when I saw it. One person was in the prep room and the closest person to the cabinet was easily over 30 feet away. I love my job. Okay, to start this off, I'm just going to explain a few things. I work with my mum and we are cleaners. We drive around all day going from house to house to clean homes. This is the first time my mum and I have encountered a paranormal experience at work. So we had three houses to clean on the 7th of this month. Two of the houses were owned by the same family. The first house was nice, nice view of the bay and stuff. I was on kitchen and my mom was on bathrooms. We kept hearing creaks in the wooden floors and on the stairs. A few light knocks here and there, but thought nothing of it as the first house this family owned was quite old as well. We did get an odd feeling in the house we were so focused on work, we just got the job done and went to their next house around the corner. But the second house was more new and pretty big. We would be there for a good few hours as it was just my mum and I that day. We got the bulk of the work done, then started changing beds. That's when I told my mum the last house felt a bit odd and I think there were some ghosts there. I then told her what I heard at that house and the way she looked at me after I was done telling her immediately came across that she witnessed something. So I said, you noticed too? She then went on to tell me that when she was in the bathroom at the first house, she saw a black figure walk past the bathroom door in the corner of her eye. But thought it was me going around dusting down furniture or something. I didn't do dusting there because we were running out of time and had to get a move on. We just assumed that maybe it was a late family member of the home hanging around and making sure we do our job right and nervously laughed it off. Mum then walked out of the bedroom to grab some pillowcases but when she looked down the stairs she saw another figure. This one was more greyish white. Look at her from the bottom of the stairs and run into the laundry room. Now 
My mum doesn't scare easily with paranormal experiences from lots of other encounters at home and from her childhood home. But she jumped and her face tingled. She then ran back into the room and told me what she saw. We both kind of got excited but nervous. And then I said to the spirits, don't worry, we're just cleaning your house. Then mum kept talking about what just happened, but as she was talking, I heard a voice reply to me from down the stairs. Mum and I quickly went quiet to try and hear, but as soon as mum stopped talking, the spirits finished what they were saying. So I unfortunately just heard them mumble a reply. I wish I, wish I knew what exactly they said. Anyways, mum and I quickly got the rest of the job done and packed up. As I was about to lock the door on my way out, I told the ghosts they couldn't follow us home and they aren't welcome to come with us and stuff. Just in case it would try to latch onto us and follow us. So the other night, I was sitting on my porch smoking a cigarette, as I usually do late at night. I was home alone, my boyfriend was at work at the time and I just heard really loud screaming. I look behind me and I see what looks like a woman just walking down the street, screaming at the top of her lungs, and she looked right at me. My initial thought was maybe it was just some weirdo or someone under the influence of something. But after more thought, I realized that the scream didn't really sound human. It sounded like something I've never heard before. After that, I thought maybe it was a skinwalker, but my mother informed me that chances are it was a banshee. For some backstory on why I think maybe she's warning me of my boyfriend's passing, it's because a couple nights before the potential banshee sighting, me and my mom had very similar dreams. In my dream, my boyfriend had passed and I was trying to figure out how to cope with his passing. In my mom's dream, I was giving birth to a child and kept saying, I need to take care of the baby. I promised to their father I would, hinting at the idea that the father was dead. I don't know what I saw, but I'm hoping for maybe some insight on banshees and just help me figure out what I saw. I saw online that Irish families can have their own banshee and I'm third generation American from an Irish family if that has any relevance. It happened several years ago. I don't remember the exact date, but we can assume it was around 2007. I was about eight years old then, but I still remember the whole event until today. At the time, I lived in a family house in the countryside, in the southeastern part of Poland. You can imagine that post-Soviet vibe. Nobody in the area had internet at home, and the most advanced technology available in the village was the Siemens C60 or another Nokia 3510i, if someone was rich enough. There was also another house in the yard next to our house, old, but entirely made of wood and already then out of use for a long time. From other people's stories, I know that the origins of this building date back to the end of the 1890s. Before the World Wars, that house served as a kind of village nursery and school for children. From my parents' reports, I know that my grandparents lived in this place and they themselves remember those years from their childhood. There was no dark secret associated with the building itself that I have ever heard of, although I must admit that this house has always bothered me. During the day, nothing prevented me from walking freely next to him or even looking inside. However, when it was getting dark, I was even afraid to look at him through the window of my family house. I felt a lot of stress and anxiety then, but of course, I wouldn't tell anyone about it. That building was in bad shape as long as I can remember it. Wooden legs were rotten, there were holes in the roof, and the windows were missing glass. These were sealed with old bags, 
effectively blocking the greater part of light that penetrated inside. I also remember to this day how while playing with a stick in a rotten beam, I found a fragment of a rifle bullet. A few centimeters long, a round piece of metal, crushed at its sharpened part. Probably a memento from the First or Second World War. It was summer, an ordinary sun, sunny day. On days like this, I like to look inside this old house as the light that filled it looked almost magical. There was no darkness. Everything was sufficiently lit by the streams of the sun. Back then, I liked rummaging in old cabinets and drawers and playing with the tools I found. At that time, this building served as our private shed. So all household tools were put there so that they would not take up space. I remember going inside and closing the door behind me. Why did I do this? I don't know. I've never dared to be inside alone with the door closed before. I probably wanted to calm down a bit and look for something interesting in old tools. After a few minutes, it began to seem as if I heard fewer and fewer outside sounds. The noise of the wind seemed to fade away and the birds seemed to wander away, escaping slowly with their singing. And then I heard it. Music seemed to be coming from the attic a quiet, muffled tune from the gramophone. It sounded like the most typical music of the 20s. There was no one in the house except me. The building also didn't have an electrical installation. However, I heard the melody coming from above the ceiling more and more clearly, as if someone there were relaxing to the calm beats of a quiet melody. I left quickly from there and when I was outside, I felt overwhelming, paralyzing fear. I heard the sound of the wind again, the singing of birds and the sounds typical of the village. However, there was no trace of the music. I haven't told anyone from my family about it so far. It seemed so unreal to me then, as if it was just a dream. Several years have passed and I still remember the whole situation very well. It's not easy for me to believe in any paranormal phenomena. So I cannot explain what's happened then. Was it really true? Or maybe I had a very realistic dream that my childhood mind confused with reality. I have no idea. My son is 10 months old and still sleeps in my room, but I have his clothes hanging up in a small closet in the bedroom meant to be his. We bought this town home back in summer and I'll bring him to the closet with me in his bedroom to look for pajamas or an outfit for daycare. Every single time I bring him there, he looks right into the darker part of the closet. We have sliding doors for this closet and he smiles and laughs right away. His eyes literally followed something back and forth and just locked on it. He doesn't do this in any other part of the house. At first, I thought it could be one of the cubbies I have with a picture of a cartoon bear, but I realized he doesn't even look at it. Today, I tested it out again and of course he smiled and giggled right away. He even put his head into my chest like he was shy. And he only does that when one of my friends come over or someone he doesn't know too well. It honestly really freaked me out. The other day, I showered in the bathroom that connects to my bedroom, which he sleeps in. I was getting ready after the shower and I swear I heard something whisper my son's name. I went to check and saw nothing. My son was still asleep. What do you guys think? Is it a good spirit? Bad? Should I be worried? I'm pregnant with number two and I wanted to move him to his own bedroom soon, but this is making him want to keep him with me. People in high school had always talked about this house out in the country that was abandoned and badly burned. 
The story was that there was a high schooler getting high and drunk upstairs years ago, and some other kids showed up and burned the building down, unsure if they knew he was inside or not, and if it was just for fun, or if they were being malicious. Anyways, my brother, along with our friends Dylan and John, got into John's car and decided to check it out one night. Along the way, we picked up my girlfriend at the time, up at her mom's house for the adventure. Remember this final detail, as it's important later. We finally got to the house after travelling down a gravel road for what felt like forever. At first, we just parked out front, taking it all in. It was pretty creepy, and just didn't feel right. We eventually walked up the courage to go inside. We got out the car, turned on our flashlights and went in. It was all so quiet because we were so freaked out and no one said a word. Until Dylan jokingly yelped and we all jumped, then laughed, but then heard a thud. We all stopped and agreed that it sounded like it came from upstairs. My brother pounded a wall next to us once there was a response from above. A similar bang of the same intensity, almost an echo. We banged again and there was another in return, so we stopped and agreed we should probably leave. Then it got weird. As we left, we heard repetitive thuds from above, over and over and over again, scaring us out of the building. We ran to the car and sped away. You'd think it'd end here, under the guise of a homeless person, or another friend coaxed into hiding and scaring us, but it wasn't the case. We dropped my girlfriend back off at her house and drove the last 10 minutes to Dylan's grandma's place. She was out of town for the weekend, so we planned to game it out and mess around there before any of this was planned. We pulled into the driveway, got out of the car and circled to examine it. We heard stories from others that there'd be handprints on their cars after they check. What we found was worse. The word die wiped into the car by someone's hand on the passenger side. As we found this, my girlfriend called my cell phone. Me, hello? Her, are you guys fucking with me? Hysterically? Me, what? What do you mean? We just got home. Her, the word die is on my mirror in the bathroom and it's all foggy. Me, what the fuck? No, we aren't fucking with you. Stay with your brother or mom, and I'll talk to you soon. Like I said, this was years ago, but I distinctly remember not telling her about our die message as to not freak her out. Though it might be better if she thought her brother was fucking with her or something. Hindsight maybe that wasn't the best idea, but I was panicked. At this point, we went into the house and agreed no one goes anywhere alone. And of course, right when we got into the house, John said he needed his phone from his car to tell his friends about this. We leaned on the whole no one goes anywhere alone thing, and I agreed to go back outside with him. Right before we got to the car, there were four clicks and each door locked. We sprinted back inside to find Dylan complaining of his arm burning before we could even tell them what happened. He ran it under the sink as we thought maybe he brushed it up against something poisonous by the house. He went to dry his arm with a towel and when he pulled it off, dye was also scraped into his arm. After this thing started to calm down, we played games and tried to ignore it all. I can't remember how I calmed my girlfriend after all this, but I think she went to stay at a friend's house for the night and was convinced her brother messed with her. This happened to me about six months ago, when I was visiting Colorado with my family for context. Myself and my boyfriend had booked night tour tickets to the Stanley, and I was thrilled. For clarification, I'm something of a hopeful skeptic and my boyfriend is more on the side of disbelief entirely. 
I would just go ahead and call him a skeptic. But this conviction goes far beyond the ramifications of the world, in this context to my belief. I think he thinks the whole idea of ghosts and the paranormal is fun, but it just doesn't seem realistic to him, and he outright refuses to put any belief in the idea. I was genuinely excited for the whole thing. Me being the little ghoul I am, had already done research into the whole history of the building, and was mainly just excited to be there and see what the tour had to offer. My boyfriend, the trooper he is, was just along for the ride. The tour guide allegedly warned us before we began that due to the high altitude, we may feel faint or pass out. And if we felt we were going to, it was okay to step out or take a moment and that the tour would circle back around. Important note, I suffer from heart palpitations and they have been intense enough in the past that I had to fight to stay conscious. I have almost passed out before due to them but the cause wouldn't be something such as altitude. And even if that did happen, I had deigned to decline the prospect of missing any of the tour at the beginning. In all seriousness, I was going to stay on the tour even if I had severe palpitations. Let's cut to the chase. And I will say this while leaving out as much as possible, so it's an entirely blank slate experience for any who might wish to attend. It was time to enter Lucy's room. There was no light whatsoever in this room, except for a red light, which was the only light, in the hallway which spilled into the entryway of the room, but did absolutely nothing in the way of revealing the interior. My boyfriend was actually a little jumpy and hot-footed it since he was a little wary of entering. I remember pushing him out of the way. Not literally, I just got in front of him and saying, don't be scared, and entering. Why would I say this, you might ask? I wanted to be known. I was genuinely excited to be there. I was genuinely excited at the prospect of seeing something I couldn't explain, and having a reason to believe. There was an ounce of fear in me, of course, but I couldn't imagine any time being wasted due to fear. I was far too elated at the entire situation, and the prospects it held. We entered and I put myself in the corner so I still had a view of the door and the people coming in. From the moment I entered, I began to see little white shapes dance across my vision. No biggie. I had seen similar shapes in dark rooms as a child. Nothing new there. Something to do with my eyes adjusting to the light, no doubt. However, just under a minute of me being in this corner, I noticed as I was watching people file into the room, I started seeing their after images follow behind them. Not anything like a little blur that covered the next people coming in to make that effect. I kept seeing the same person enter over and over again, like a haze. And it was happening for everyone. For instance, guy number one is super buff and short. After he entered the room, I would see the exact same shape follow close behind. Girl number two, who's super tall and lanky, would enter for the first time, and I would see her shape follow close behind and enter the room over and over again, and it wouldn't stop. I think there's a term for this experience, actually. And in those stories, the visual effect follows the person. These kept going. I started to think my eyes were playing tricks on me due to the light, and I wiped my eyes to get rid of it. Nope, kept happening. I began to feel light, like I was floating and light as a feather. I could no longer feel the floor beneath me, or anything for that matter. And don't imagine it as being lifted. It was suddenly like all sense just disappeared except sight. Nothing around me. Like I was there, but I wasn't. And even that doesn't describe it. It almost felt like I was being held off the ground in suspension, but there was no weight pulling me down. I felt like I weighed nothing at all. And I remember envisioning a feather in the center of my chest. I felt what can only be described as my head falling backwards and my eyes closing, but I could see perfectly 
and there was no concept of shape. I remember being able to trust that I wasn't actually falling due to the fact that I was leaned against the wall behind me before the whole thing occurred, which kept me grounded. I remember having to fight to regain control over my body again. And when I looked up, the hazers were still happening. Same guy number one entering the room over and over again. Same girl number one entering the room over and over again. I remember feeling a sense of danger and knowing I needed to leave. So I said, I need to go and waited to see if the hazers cleared. They didn't, but the hazers seemed to move out of the way instead. I remembered gunning it for the door and hoping I didn't hit anybody. The hallway was distorted, like looking through a fisheye lens. The walls were tall and around, and the floor was thin and long, and the red light was intense. I ran back to the stairs I initially came down and noticed the carpet was distorted as well. No color changes, but certain areas of the pattern were bulged and around and other parts were thin and spindly. I ran up the stairs as best as I could and my vision began to blank. When I remember this part now, I distinctly remember it in frames. Like I remember being by one chair when I came up the stairs and being much farther away and closer to the doors next. Not like a fluid memory, it played normally in your head. And the moment I got out of those doors, it was normal again. It took a few seconds to clear up, but almost instantly after, I was fine again, completely fine. Now, as I said, I have almost passed out before on multiple occasions. And for me, there's a warning and a sense of dread. There's panic, and I know it's coming ahead of time. And now, due to a more recent event, I have almost passed out due to low blood sugar. So I still haven't experienced anything like this. As well, in the moment, I felt like I was falling back. I felt no fear, only confusion and peace. I wondered what was happening, but I wasn't terrified and panicking in the moment like I have been since. I have never experienced anything visual like this either. Not since or before. In fact, nothing I experienced in this story I have experienced before or after which is why this experience excited me. The moment everything cleared away after I got outside as well, I remember being super angry with myself for not sticking through it and seeing what happened because I got exactly what I wanted. A super cool experience with no explanation from my end. I heard later on from another person on the tour that she thought I was an actor, which was fun. And the buff guy was a real guy. He told me later on his wife had to stop him from running too. As well, I understand this sounds super made up and crazy, even though I have fun telling friends and family this story. It definitely comes across as a short fiction on paper, but I promise, for what it's worth, this actually happened. And this is actually one of the best stories I'll ever have, most likely. This is super long. Sorry for that, but I hope some believers enjoyed it and got super excited, as I did. For a bit of context, this happened years ago, back when I worked at my local theater. Being locally owned, it wasn't, and still isn't, nearly as big as your big corporation theaters like AMC, but it still had 10 different screens, mostly with stadium style seating, but some with recliners as well. It's pretty well maintained and updated too. It's not old or dingy feeling at all. I've never seen super gung-ho on believing the paranormal, but I've never straight up denied it either. Most of my family is the same way, but my mom is pretty into that kind of thing. Also noteworthy, my older sister had worked at the same theater a few years before me. At the point I encountered the ghost, I had only been working there a few months. I'm not a night person, 
So up until this point, I hadn't ever worked a closing shift. I know, stereotypical spooky night shift kind of stuff, but it just so happened to work out like that. Either way, it was probably around 11.30 p.m. and Theatre 6, being at the back of the main hallway, had just let out its final showing for the night. My, an- my manager asked if I could go clean it well and take out the trash, so it was good to go in the morning. Of course, that was my job, so I did. I walked into the theatre with my broom and dustpan and started sweeping up loose popcorn, straw papers, the usual. I work up the first few rows of seats, nothing unusual. And then as I hit the third or fourth row, I see a black figure of what looked like a man watching me from the top right section of the theater. At first I thought maybe I was so absorbed staring under the seats for trash that I somehow didn't notice that someone hadn't left the theater yet. But as soon as I looked up, there was nothing there but empty seats. I was a little weirded out, but chalked it up to me being a bit tired from working a bit later than I'm used to, and kept going. Soon after, I reached the first two rows of premium seats, being the recliners. We had to wash those off with a wet rag, so they're a bit more time consuming to clean. As I'm bent over, one of these recliners scrubbing some gunk off it, I once more see a black figure, but this time it is much closer and walks directly behind me. Just then, I feel a tap on my shoulder, like somebody is trying to get my attention. Once again, I reason that maybe my manager walked in and needs something. So I turn around and audibly ask if they need something, only to once again be met with an empty room behind me. Now I'm starting to think something weird is up, and I didn't like it. Now that fear has set in, I can't stop feeling chills go down my spine like crazy, and I'm always scanning the room for activity. I'm pretty much running down the rows of seats, and only stopping if I see a very obvious mess. I do the exact same thing with the second row of recliners at the top of the theatre, almost entirely foregoing washing them down. As I finish cleaning in the top row, I once again see the figure behind me, since I am standing only about two rows directly above where I saw it the first time. It wasn't a particularly threatening figure in retrospect. The worst it ever did was tap on my shoulder, but it was late and I was tired. I didn't have the time nor energy to deal with a needy ghost. As such, I bucket down the left set of stairs, grabbed the trash can and ran out of the theater. I said nothing about this to any of my co-workers or managers, mostly because I didn't want to sound crazy. However, after going home, I told my mom about the situation and being paranormally intrigued, for a lack of a better term, she was quite into the story and then told me, I think your sister said that one of the theaters is haunted before. You'll have to tell her this. At this time, my sister was home from college So I went and told her the story, at which point she looks at me with a clearly surprised expression and asks me, you mean none of the managers ever told you the story of how Theatre 6 is haunted? At which point I told her, obviously not. I nearly just shat myself cleaning up that theatre, thinking I was losing my mind. So to wrap up, after talking to the oldest of my managers, She informed me that an old man died of a heart attack in Theatre 6 while watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre many moons before, and apparently his name was Tom. It just so happens that workers find that the trash can in that theatre loves to fall over randomly, even while they are present in the theatre, and it seems like I'm the lucky employee who had the pleasure of actually meeting Tom. It took some courage to go into that theater alone again after that incident, but I actually started to enjoy it after a while. And I would always try and ask Tom how his day was, if he liked seeing the same movie 30 times over and that kind of thing, in the hopes that maybe I would meet him again. Whether it would be a good thing or not, I never did.
About three months ago, I started a new job. What I do isn't important or relevant. I started noticing things going on in the women's bathroom pretty much immediately. If you dig on my profile, you'll see I'm non-binary. I use the women's because I'm out at work. Not important, but I figured I'd clear the air about it now. Anyway, the women's restroom has three stalls side by side with a handicapped stall taking up the entire back wall. Altogether, they make sort of an L shape. The third stall, right next to the handicapped stall, is where all the activity is. At least twice a week, I will walk past that stall to take luxury poos in the handicapped stall. I like to live a little. And see someone standing in the stall, facing the wall, not moving, with the door open. They're always wearing a black and white sweater. No florals exactly, but not just ex abstract blobs either. They have shoulder length, very shiny black hair. I've never gotten close look at what bottoms they're wearing, but they're a dark color. The first dozen times I thought, what a weird way to stand in the stall and try to look at the shoes once I had sat down only to see nothing. No shoes, no shadow, nothing. Did they manage to leave the stall in the few seconds it took me to get there? How did they do that silently on a tile floor? They didn't even flush or wash their hands or open the door to leave. Sometimes I'll walk in and hear noises as though someone is shaking the toilet paper dispenser in that stall. As soon as I get to it, silence and nothing to be seen. That toilet also flushes by itself sometimes, which is a feat since it isn't motion sensed. The custodian often complains about how there's always dust and toilet paper on the floor in that stall, but she can't find a source for the dust. The ceiling tiles above are in good shape and there's no holes in the wall. I have no idea the history of this building and most of the people have been there less than three years and joke about the problem stall having been a problem since they got there. A typical skeptic as I am, I hesitate to outright say there's a ghost, but I really can't explain everything that goes on in that stall. This morning at around 4.30 a.m., I stepped out my front door and I could see in front of me some shimmering in the sky. My street looks out over to a big hill with woods on it, and above it I could see maybe five small, faint white lights fading in and out, some standing still and some whizzing about like a meteor shower. This morning we had heavy rain, which stopped just before I left, so there were heavy low clouds, and these were definitely below the cloud line. They were like stars, but almost like they were half opaque. I watched them for a good 10 minutes or so before I had to leave. They looked like stars, but as I said, they were definitely below the cloud line and moved independently of each other. Twice there were bursts which moved like those sparky spinning fireworks. Those fireworks that make a whistling noise but with a weird dim, faint light. Oh, also, they were concentrated to one spot which rules out a meteor shower, which was my initial thought. I didn't have my phone on me, but I suspect they would have been bright enough to be picked up in the conditions. Interested to hear what people make of this one. I don't have any explanations, but it was certainly unusual, and I thought this board would maybe find it interesting. So I will start this off with a very brief explanation of who I am and what my life is about. I grew up psychic in a very haunted house. However, it wasn't until about age 18 that I started to realize that it was not the house that was haunted, but me. I have had lots of experiences with friends and family who really didn't believe in spirits but I would somehow expand the frequency and they would see and feel the things when I was around. 
This is one of those experiences. This happened back when I was 18, several years ago. I had just graduated high school, was hanging out with my high school boyfriend in our small country town. The usual bored teenager stuff there is to do on a weekend. He was driving us around town, trying to figure out what there was to do that night. Finding ourselves driving up to an early 1800s graveyard with some beautiful gravestones. It was about 8pm and nobody was there. Myself, always having loved graveyards and seeing the beautiful artwork on the stones, agreed that we could walk around for a bit. My boyfriend held the flashlight and we walked around looking to find the oldest gravestone. Many had dates around 1800 to 1820, so it was fascinating to see my town's history literally right there. We had been walking around the graveyard, respectfully minding the stones and uprighting some fallen plants, when I felt almost magnetically drawn to a gravestone about 20 feet away. I made a beeline towards it, and right as I stepped in front of the stone, two things happened. My boyfriend turned and shined the light directly at me. He screamed and said, holy shit, what was that? We need to get out of here now. Sprinted to me, grabbed my wrist, and half ran, half stumbled to his car. Myself, the whole time, questioning what on earth, what had just happened, because I had witnessed absolutely nothing, and my boyfriend was the type to be not afraid of anything. I always felt like he could have a standoff with a lion and never flinch. We got in his car and we peeled out as quickly as possible. My boyfriend positively shaking and sweating, panting and continuously glancing at me and struggling to grasp for words. About 15 minutes later we got to my house and when we stopped in the driveway it took a further few minutes for him to calm down and stop shaking. When he got himself together he said, I felt like there was something really strange going on right before you walked over to that grave. Like I knew that you could hear something that I couldn't and I don't even believe in this stuff. So I saw you walk over to that grave and right as you stopped and looked at it, I saw the fully black figure of a man appear 10 feet away and then it sprinted right at you and then it ran into your body And as it ran into you, you disappeared. And right when I screamed, you were there again. And after that day, he began experiencing the paranormal and spirits, literally just like that. It was both the weirdest and most unexplained thing I have ever experienced. And also confusing for that to be the first spiritual encounter for someone to have. And yet, He's a very stable, incredibly logical and science-oriented person. But it was the experience that changed his life and brought him to the spiritual path. I have been known in the past to sort of be a portal for spirits. I have experienced this many times in ceremonies of various kinds. And also the work I have done of crossing over spirits that needed to move on. But never before had I witnessed my energy do this before. I have many, many experiences through my life that I can explain away perfectly in terms of spirits, knowing exactly what has happened. But this is one of very few experiences where I don't have an answer to why that happened in that way. So that's just one of hundreds of experiences that I've witnessed, or rather been a part of, for people around me. One evening, my mum was sitting on her bed when the brightest white lights surrounded her, swirling around and beaming bright lights. It was like a column around her, she says. She told me about this and she was quite uneasy. Anyway, about three days later, myself and my boyfriend were sat in the living room and my mum was sat in the middle of the stairs. Out of the sight from us, but we could see the bottom of the stairs through the open living room door. It was daylight, but we seen the doorway light up and flicker the brightest light, like a strobe light, but brighter. 
I shouted out and my mum ran down the stairs and said, please tell me you saw that. She said she had the brightest balls of light darting from her again. And although we never saw the balls of light as she was out of sight, we saw the light effect it had created. To add to this, there was no other explanation any of us can think of. There are no windows in our doorway. There's no light halfway up the stairs. It would never create so much light, even if it was. At the time, I was young and so afraid my mum got an electrician out to try and get some sort of explanation. And he was stumped. It could have been car lights, as at night her curtains were shut. And at other times we witnessed it was daylight. I've had some weird occurrences in my life and just want to know if anyone has seen or heard of the same. I called them house ghouls, but I don't know what they're actually called. Some say they are the reasons for arguments and disruptions inside the home and can be brought in by messing with certain doors you can't close. They lurk inside your homes undetected by the naked eye. They live inside the cracks of walls and your home mainly crawl spaces, attics, or basements. Not sure if they are supernatural beings or not, but I once encountered it. Me and the neighbor's house was maybe 80 or 100 feet away. When I lived in South Jersey, near Vineland, the neighbors aren't what you would call quiet neighbors. They had the county police out there a couple times, mainly domestic calls for their adult son from within the home. He may have autism or some other type of learning or developmental disability because he would lash out in anger sometimes in the household. It was just the father and the mother with their son residing there. One night, the ambulance and police came out to the house and they brought the son out of the home on a stretcher, screaming pennies or something. It looked like visible blood, but I really couldn't see anything due to the glare of the police lights and EMS strobes lighting up the area. His mother was also taken to medical and his father stayed at home. A day or two later, no one was at home and it looks like they moved out. Seems like they just up and left. We're in a small town, so I would think somebody would have seen somebody leave. I was able to cure my intense curiosity because a buddy of mine went to high school with was an EMT that night at the house. And I was able to catch him at the local bar. Sitting at the bar, I go up and ask, Oscar, what the hell happened that night? He calmly looks at me with a hump and grin and then responds, crazy shit. He told me that he, son, snapped, took a paring knife, stabbed his mother in the neck, then went after the old man. He, the father, was able to shove his son inside a closet and lock the door until the police arrived. While inside the closet, the son then started a bellowing scream, almost like a howl. When police opened the door, he had took the paring knife and stabbed all inside his navel and gouged his right eye out. He screamed penance the whole way out of the home and all the way to the hospital. I then said, wow, do you think he just snapped? My friend said, nah, it's definitely the house. I then choked it off. The exact same night later on, I saw what looked like people at the home. There was discarded furniture at the end of the lawn for trash, couches, tables, chairs, and other things. I assume was clothes inside of black trash bags. It's not uncommon for people to search through trash or furniture though. So as I was going to look away, I noticed these things were like little elderly people, hunched over very skinny bodies and protruding round bellies. Seems like they're balding with just very thinning strands of cotton-like hair, illuminated by the dimming garage light. I go out to take a further look, and I see two of them rummaging about the trash. One of them go then goes around the side of the home, no more than four foot four, tall, stocky build, and skin was like a pale, sweaty hide. Arms were short at the shoulder and long at the elbows. Also walked with a hobble, and disgustingly snorted in air as it walked. The other was a bit taller, maybe around 5'11", short arms, long fingers, and long skinny legs, but 
but walked hunched over. If stood straight up, it would maybe be about seven foot one. Both have very deep eye sockets. You can barely see any eyes. In total disbelief of what I'm seeing, I had to wake my wife up and show her. She then goes and makes salt water and said an African Orishas prayer, opened the door, poured the, poured the water on our doorstep and porch and closed it. We then watched the things try to get back inside the empty home and they were gone. I then find out a lady lived there way before I was born and she charged people to do seance. She was a medium. Needless to say, I don't live around there anymore. This was a while ago now, 2015-ish, and I still have PTSD from that time. I was sitting at the table eating dinner around 6 p.m. and had a funny feeling that something was behind me. So I turned around and saw what seemed to be like a mix of light and fog float past the couch in my living room. It was definitely shaped like a human, but I was quick to shake it off, thinking that I'm just seeing things because I didn't want to scare myself, lol. So I turn back around to eat and I see my sister that's sitting opposite the couch where I'd just seen the apparition, making a funny face. She looks at me and says, did you see that? And that's when I realized to myself, oh shit, I've just seen a ghost. I quickly go outside to try and debunk the situation, whether or not it could be a car coming up the driveway, but there was nothing. The house I was living in at the time had a really long driveway with multiple residents, so I was hoping it might have been one of them, but nope. Pretty much after we had seen that, the energy in the house changed and things started getting really weird. Like for one, I was left home alone one night with my old man went for work for the night shift. So I would go around the house and close all the doors and make sure they can't open. So I know that if one is open, I know for sure it wasn't the wind or something like that. And I would always make sure the front door was unlocked. Well, I get a call from my old man telling me to unlock the door. And I say to him, it is. And he's saying to me, nope, it's pretty locked because I'm outside. I walk towards the door in disbelief thinking, I swear I left it unlocked. I'm so sure of it. And as I got to the door, I noticed the door to the garage was wide open, which was pretty much next to the front door. And the damn door was locked as well. From that night onwards, I was traumatized for what seemed like an eternity. I could no longer sleep without white noise in the background. I would have the fan on while playing a podcast of our local radio station. I lived like that for a few years. I'm not anywhere near as bad as I was now since I've moved, but now and again, I play their podcast to help me sleep. Never want to experience something like that ever again. I was skeptical about ghosts till that happened. Hauntings carried on for a few months until the house was blessed by a minister. My partner and I moved into our house earlier this year. It's our first home together and we're absolutely delighted. Around a month in, I began hearing noises. Nothing too much. Little things like hearing movement in the kitchen when I was in the lounge or hearing footsteps upstairs. Things I could put down to the house settling or maybe sounds from the next door neighbor. These noises continued and I never mentioned anything to my partner until one night we were watching TV, when out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone in a bright red jumper walk from the cupboard under the stairs into the kitchen. I went in to check if we had an intruder to find no one there and the back door was locked. My partner double checked around the house to no avail and we put this down to me being tired. My partner is a skeptic. A month after that, my partner and I were watching a YouTube video on the TV and decided we wanted to go and look in the loft to find some DVDs. We both went upstairs after pausing the video and when we came back down, the YouTube video was no longer on the screen and someone had searched hello in the search bar. Nobody else was in the house. The doors and windows were locked 
and it was connected to my partner's YouTube account that is only signed in on the TV and his phone, which was also downstairs. After that, my partner had told me that he had also been seeing things out of the corner of his eye and hearing noises, but didn't want to tell me as he thought he was making it up. Whatever the explanation, it's been a bit unnerving, to say the least. Lately, a lot of activity happens in my house. My family has several paranormal occurrences happen, and we're pretty much used to it at this point. But lately, things have been different with the things that we see or hear. Everyone in my family knows about a few spirits that we have in our basement, and how they sometimes chase us or hover near us whenever we're down there alone. But the other day, I went down to the laundry room and was grabbing a few cake pans and putting my laundry in the dryer, when something behind the water tank started peeking out and looking at me. I just thought that if I told it to leave me alone like I usually do, it'd disappear. When my brother came out of his room, he stopped to talk to me or ask me something when it started peeking out again, inching closer to us when I told him to run. It's this weird, hunched over, pure white being that has no facial features that I know of or see. The other thing that stands there is this pure black thing that's in the main part of the basement that waits near the stairs and chases you. It also doesn't have facial features since it's too dark. And this thing seems to be darker than any shade of black. It's tall, has scraggly hair and very long fingers that's hunched over. The other day when I went to grab a few cooking ingredients, it was very low to the ground and seemed to launch itself at me, which scared me since it's never done that before. The other thing that we noticed is the amount of activity near the basement stairs and the kitchen area. Our dog gets excited whenever someone comes upstairs and she jumps up and wags her tail and waits for them to come up so she can get pats and kisses. Every so often, when everyone's upstairs, we'd hear someone or something run up the stairs and our dog would go to the stairs to see who it is, only no one comes up. The other thing we noticed is this person that peeks from the stairs into the kitchen. All we see is its head, part of their neck, a few blurred facial features, and that's it. We'd be having a conversation and suddenly see this person peeking over at us from the stairs and duck back down before we realized what happened. I'm not sure where all this activity is coming from, but it can get creepy sometimes when you're the only one around to witness it or have someone else not witness it when you're there and seeing it for yourself. I was home alone when everyone else went to take the dog out to the farm and wanted to go to a few stores. I didn't want to go since the car would be packed and loud, so I decided to stay home and clean up. I saw everyone leave and the only ones home were the cat and I. I went to the kitchen and started on doing the dishes. I threw the old dish rag down the stairs to the basement, thinking that when someone goes down there, they'll toss it in the washer. I got this sudden sense of dread from the stairs and ran back to the kitchen, bumping into the table out of fear. I thought nothing of it later and got a new dish rag. I got this sense of someone on the stairs and so I went to go see if my cat had a hard time jumping over the baby gate at the bottom of the stairs. We have to have one so our dog doesn't go to the basement. I checked and didn't see my cat there and as I was about to head back up, I heard this very loud, deep growl. It sounded like an animal, but at the same time it didn't. It was so loud and deep, I thought it was right beside me. I was able to feel the vibrations of it in the floors and in my chest, and I was frozen to the spot. It growled again, and I ran back upstairs as fast as I could. 
I've never heard anything that loud and deep before, and it scared me so bad. We live in the city where the only animals that roam around the streets are stray cats and rabbits. There's no stray dogs in my neighborhood, and we don't have any animals in the house besides our cat, dog, and budgies. It wasn't a truck driving by since it was late, and we're able to tell the sound of a truck. I'm not sure what it was, but that was the only time I heard it, and haven't heard it since. The other day, I was in the backyard with my cat. I have to be out there so she doesn't escape her harness and takes off. And I was in the garden looking for cucumbers and squashes to bring inside. Really, the only thing I'm scared of out there are wasps. But then I see this figure behind me, and I thought it was my brother trying to come up and scare me. And when I turned around to confront him, I saw no one there. Going about my business, I bring whatever I picked inside the house, and I head back out. Nothing else happens when I'm out there. After a bit, I head in when my cat wants to go in, and not long after that, my mom, grandma, and brothers head out to go walk the dog, and my other brother left to be with friends, so it was just my cat and I at home. I was cleaning and baking, and as I said something in the living room, I turn and see the black figure again, but in full view. It's just a little shorter than I am, it's fully black, and in the middle of its face is this weird red mark. As soon as I see it, it's gone. When the others got back, I told my mom about it, and she doesn't have any idea what it could be. The next day, it's just my grandma and brother at home, since my mom went to work and my brothers are at school, and my other brother is downstairs. I was making something in the kitchen, and I see that same figure again, still standing really close to me. At first, I wasn't scared of it since it caught me off guard. But now that it's not leaving me alone, I'm starting to get freaked out about it. Cut to last night, and everyone's heading off to bed. The animals are already fast asleep, and I'm the only one that's still walking around fully awake. It was close to 2 a.m., and I head out to the kitchen to grab something to drink and to use the bathroom. When all of a sudden, I feel like something is behind me. The only light that I put on was the bathroom one, and that was down the hall, so it was dark where I was standing in the kitchen. On instinct, I opened the fridge so the light inside would come on, and when I turned, the figure is standing there. I forgot about my drink. I walked fast to my room so I didn't wake anyone up by running. I turned the bathroom light off as I passed, and I didn't come out of my room after that. In all honesty, I'm not sure what this thing is, why it's following me, or how it started to follow me. The first time I saw it was in the garden a couple days back, and ever since then, it's been popping up at odd times here and there, just standing really close to me, and not doing anything else. So our house was built back in 99, about a year or so before I was born. I've had a few odd experiences in my life, but the craziest was when I was 10 or 11 years old. My brother's ex-girlfriend and I were hanging out in one of the back rooms, now our current roommate's room, watching a movie late one night. My parents and brothers were not home when this happened, since my parents were out on a date at the time. Anyway, we were watching a comedy, so I know that this wasn't just my imagination playing tricks on me. And halfway through the movie, she ended up pausing it. She asked, did you hear that? I said, no, what? She shook her head and we continued watching the movie. About five minutes later, she stopped it again. With a confused look, she asked, are your parents home yet? I said, no, they went out on a date not that long ago so they shouldn't be back yet. After the third time of hearing something, she paused the movie. I got up and opened the door to our hallway. There, 
I saw an orb of light move quickly out of the hallway. What the hell? I exclaimed, walking towards the kitchen where it darted to. Now, our hallway is straight, with my room completely opposite of the room we were in, on the other side. There's also a middle bedroom on the right, and just after that, her bathroom. The entrance to the kitchen is on the left side, but you can't actually see it if you're in the hallway. And so when I saw the orb dart out of the hallway, I didn't see it after that, since I saw it for a brief second. We both walked out towards the kitchen and, I kid you not, the cupboards that held our pots and pans opened and they all flew out and onto the kitchen floor. At the same time, we heard what sounded like muffled voices all throughout the house, going room to room. It was almost like a whole bunch of people were walking through the house as we felt vibrations on the floor, almost like the whole house was pulsating, to put it accurately. It wasn't loud at all, but it's hard to describe fully since it's been a while. Then I looked towards our living room and on our glass table, a globe, which was in the middle of the table, moved towards the edge and dropped to the floor. After that, it was completely silent. We ended up going outside and waited for my parents to come home. And a friend of hers came over and she told her what happened. After that, it never happened again. To this day, I've never had anything like that happen to me ever. And to this day, I still have no clue what the hell happened. Must have been some odd poltergeist activity that just randomly sparked out of nowhere. Our house isn't haunted, but I've had some odd things happen to me, for years even. Oftentimes, I'll hear my name being called out of nowhere, often when I'm alone minding my own business. Occasionally see shadow figures, or at least I think they are, walk out of the corner of my eye in the hallway. That's something that would happen a lot when I was a kid. I think that in my recent years of becoming a born again Christian, I believe that activity has stopped and I've barely had any experiences, which makes me think it was possibly demonic in nature or something. Now, our house might have been built, but that doesn't mean the area surrounding it before the subdivision doesn't have some history to it. My stepmom, now my dad's current wife because of my parents' divorce in 2013, has seen a soldier at the foot of her bed when she's fallen asleep. Well, she's seen a little boy that walks in the hallway. But this was one time. When I was younger, about 14 years old, I sometimes slept on the couch in my living room because I felt like I was being watched in my own bedroom. One time, I heard soft footsteps approach me and I felt a weight on the other side of the couch. I stretched my leg, but the area where the supposed thing was felt really cold. Like it was summer and it was hot outside, but that one area felt like ice. I quickly opened my eyes and saw like an outline of a very tall figure sitting there next to me on the couch. I was curious and terrified at the same time and moved my hand through the same area to check if it was really cold, and it was. It sounded like it tried to comfort me in some weird way, because I felt the coldness move from that area towards me, and I vaguely heard a whisper that, it's all right, don't be scared. After that, I just kept staring at the figure, and then I finally felt the weight lift, and I heard it walk to the other side of the living room, towards my old piano. I heard some kind of laughing and then my old piano, which was closed at first, the cover was down, started to play a random tune. I was super freaked out and turned the lights on my phone on and watched the piano and I literally saw nothing sitting behind it, but I did see the keys moving. I gathered some courage and moved my hand through the area in front of the piano and it was cold again. Fast forward to one week later, and I was going for a walk at night with my mom, and I was crossing a street. While doing this, I didn't fully watch out for cars and just crossed over. 
Keep in mind that my mom was waiting for me on the other side of the road. I didn't see the car that was approaching me in time, and I thought I was going to get hit. But then something or someone pulled me back, and I fell back down on the pavement. It was still summer, but that one area I landed in was ice cold again. Ever since those encounters, I sometimes still sense it following me around, and for some reason, I became very comfortable with feeling the cold and sometimes seeing the tall figure or hearing vague whispers. Can anyone maybe help me figure out what this may be? Our ghost, who we have named Mr. Rydell, is a tall man who wears a trench coat and top hat. I'm also the only person who's ever seen his actual silhouette. I'm also the only person's name he's spoken. One time, I was doing dishes in our back room, and the only other person there was our assistant's manager, but he was in the front of the building doing paperwork. In my ear, I could hear a whisper of my name, and of course, I was freaked out. So I went down to ask my manager what he needed. Upon telling me he never called my name, I realized in that moment that ghosts truly were real. He's also known for opening and shutting our back door, our walk-in freezer, and our guest bathroom. Every Sunday morning, I come in and tell him good morning, and without about five minutes, he's either opened a door and I can hear him walking. It's just our routine. Another occurrence that happens is when you're at the oven, it's a pizza place, out of the corner of your eye, you're able to see his figure cross from our back room to our office. Except, the few times I've seen him, he stood at the top of our three steps and just stared at me. He's never harmed any of us, so I'm just curious of why he's taken an interest in me. So my mom died in 2019, within the span of a month, from breast cancer that spread to her lymph nodes. She was in remission for about a year, and it happened so suddenly. Me and her always kind of had a rocky relationship. She was often in controlling, abusive relationships. I ended up in one myself as karma, for assuming you, ho you have to be weak-minded to be in one, I swear. But anyways, on her deathbed, she spoke to me about seeing her sister who had died. Seeing an old black figure that would come to sit with her and talk for hours, but she never remembered the conversation. She had deep, apologetic conversations with me that made me realize she was going to die. She knew I was the only one who would believe her, so she'd tell me about all kinds of weird stuff. My ex had died a few months prior, my only true love, and she knew this. And she'd tell me and reassure me she would speak to him when she saw him and hug him for me. A lot of other weird things, but I ended up asking her if she could prove there was another side once she's passed. I got my wish. When she passed away, her husband was too distraught to sit with the body, so I did and waited for the team from the funeral home to come. Also, I forgot to mention I asked the woman working in the hospice facility, jokingly, if they'd ever seen anything. And both said yes. That they hear footsteps, TVs turn on and open, the window when people pass and let them know it's time to go, or often they will linger. They told me these things with a straight face, as if it's an everyday occurrence. While sitting with my mom, I felt like she was no longer her, even holding her hand. I couldn't feel her energy, if that makes sense. I was crying, and suddenly I heard what sounds like someone slide off the hospital bed, walk with those weird hospital socks to the cabinet, and saw the cabinets open and close about an inch. I said, Mom, it's too early, and ran out the room. A few nights ago, I had a wedding to attend. Whenever I have to dress fancy, I put on this sparkly necklace that my grandma left to me when she passed away. 
The chain is very, very thin gold, and the pendant is a thick, solid gold R, which was my grandma's and my first initial. The front of the R is covered in diamonds, and it's the kind of necklace pendant that doesn't twist or rotate. It stays facing whichever way you put it on, so naturally every time I put this necklace on, I always check to make sure I put it on the right way, shiny side facing out. So before the wedding, I put on the necklace as per usual, looked in the mirror to make sure it was on the right way, which it was. Then I go to the wedding and take a bun bunch of pictures with friends. All the while, in every single picture, my necklace is faced the right way. Then I get home, I'm exhausted, and go lay in bed. I'm too tired to take off my jewelry and makeup, so I leave the necklace on, which I never ever do because the chain is fragile. Right before I went to sleep, my cat jumped into bed with me and was laying across my chest, being adorable. So I took a picture of her laying on my chest. In that picture with my cat, taken moments before I went to sleep, the necklace was on the right way, sparkly diamond side facing out. I had a horrible dream that night where someone was pulling on my necklace and I was yelling at them to stop. But it was too late and the necklace broke off my neck. Instead of the person taking it and stealing, the moment it broke it fell to the floor and the person who broke it disappeared or evaporated. I then picked it up off the ground and was examining it close to my face and realized that the clasp was broken and I was all upset about it. The next morning, I jolted awake from the dream and went to take a shower. I looked at myself in the mirror and saw something that made my stomach drop to the floor. My necklace was on backwards. The diamond side was facing inwards, which was impossible, unless it was taken off me and turned completely around and put back on. I definitely didn't take it off myself in my sleep because I have arthritis in my hands, so it's really hard for me to unclasp it even when I'm awake, because it's so small. I asked my husband if he had taken it off me in my sleep, and he said no, and that he was working on his computer the entire time I was asleep, and didn't even come into the room once. I have zero explanation for how this could have possibly happened. I've racked my brain for literally any reasonable answer, and I can't think of any. Gives me shivers to even think about it, to be honest. In 2017, my grandpa died. My family and I knew he wasn't doing so good, so we went to the hospital to basically say our goodbyes, and he ended up passing away that night after dinner. That night, I had an awful dream that I'll never be able to forget. And before anyone asks, no, I didn't eat anything before I went to bed or watch anything scary or weird before bed either. So I wanna start off by saying that in my dream, it felt very real. I could feel and smell everything. I didn't realize it was a dream until I had actually woken up. Anyways, I dreamt that I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I could feel the carpet on my feet as I walked out of my room, and I could actually feel myself, you know, peeing. Once I'm finished, I go to exit the bathroom. I'm standing in the doorway of the bathroom, which gave me perfect view down my stairs, a bit of the main entrance of my house, along with a bit of the dining room. All of a sudden, I hear knuckles cracking, and notice that there's feet dangling from the doorway of my dining room downstairs like as if someone was hanging from the ceiling. I call out for my mom multiple times and there's no answer. The feet then stretch out and a woman jumps down. She looks like a zombie. She's in a weird old dress with tattered hair. She kind of looked like Regan from The Exorcist. I call for my mom again and there's no answer. This woman then smiles at me and yells in an awful raspy voice, get out. I then goes to go into my room, which is right beside the bathroom. As I move slightly, she starts rapidly running up the stairs. I get to my room just in time 
and immediately lay back in my bed and pull the covers up over my head. Everything goes black. Some time has passed, not sure how long, but I wake up again, feeling so real again. I go to sit up, but I can't. I can only open my eyes. I'm having sleep paralysis, something I have never experienced before. Someone is in the corner of my room. I hear, get out, in that same awful raspy voice. I can't do anything. She says it again and starts to get closer. I then wake up for real this time. It's 3 a.m. when I wake up. A few days later, my dog woke up my dad and I in the middle of the night. She just wouldn't stop barking. I get up to go check it out, but I heard my dad coming down the hall doing the same thing. So I get back into bed. My dog parking in the night isn't abnormal. She barks at anyone she sees or hears walk by. The next morning, I asked my dad what she was barking at. He told me and my stomach dropped. He said that when he came downstairs, she was barking at the top of the door frame where I saw the woman's feet hanging from the beginning of my dream. He said he even stood in front of her and she moved her head to continue to stare at the top of that door frame. She did eventually stop after 10 minutes. Nothing has happened to me ever since, so I'm not really thinking I brought something home with me from the hospital anymore. But at first I really thought I had. I still think about that dream often and wonder why the woman wanted me to leave and why she was freaking my dog out a few nights later. So me and my mom had the same dream last night. It was about my grandmother who passed away almost a year ago. I always had a very deep bond with my grandmother. I always considered her as my mother and would always visit her during the week when I could. I remember telling her to send me signs, talk to me when she'd pass away. I remember that to that, she only replied that she'd watch over me. Anyway, when she passed away last year because of COVID, I was devastated. I expected her to send me a sign, to feel her presence, but nothing. Unlike my grandfather, whom I could feel his presence with us when he passed away a few years ago. So when I went to sleep last night, I wasn't thinking about anything in particular. Then in my dream, I saw her. I was so happy that I remember screaming, Grandma. I don't remember being in a special place like a house or outside. It was just the two of us. I don't remember anything I asked her but I do remember asking her a lot of questions. I asked if my grandpa was fine and she replied yes, and that when she was still alive, she couldn't feel his presence, but that when she passed away, he was waiting for her. When I woke up, I sent a message to my mom because we don't live together anymore. And I said that I had a strange dream last night. She replied, me too, about grandma. I hadn't told her before that it was about my grandma. She told me that in the dream, she asked her if she could see us from above and to that she replied, yes. I told my mom that I felt so happy in the dream, but she told me that her, on the other hand, was feeling oppressed. So what do you guys think? I don't think it's just a coincidence. So the first time I experienced this, I would say I was about eight or nine. My brother and I were looking through boxes of stuff in the garage. We could hear the occasional car drive by or child in the distance, but no sounds extremely close by. All of a sudden, a voice that sounded like it was inside the garage giggled, guys. It began loud and then faded away. Both of my brother and I immediately stopped looking through the boxes and looked at each other. Scared, we ran out, leaving everything as it was. The scarier thing about this experience 
was that it sounded exactly like our younger cousin, who at the time was out of the state. This other story happened this year, around three months ago. On this particular evening, I was extremely tired and decided to head to bed quite early. I was exhausted, so it didn't take much for me to fall asleep straight away. I remember setting my phone down at three minutes past ten. All of a sudden, I was jolted awake by the feeling that someone was right next to my face. And that's when I opened my eyes and heard a raspy low scream that started loud and faded away. I was confused when I first heard it, thinking it was my brother joking around, because it sounded exactly like him. So I lifted my head and looked around. I tapped my phone to see the time and it was 10.27. No one was there. I closed my eyes and tried to rationalize what had just happened, but all I could think is that it was definitely paranormal. I began to sweat and my heart was racing. I couldn't fall asleep for hours. I don't know what to think, but it's scary because each time it sounded like someone I know. Near Stevens Pass, Washington, there's a two and a half mile long abandoned train tunnel, rumored to be haunted by victims of a deadly avalanche in 1910. About a hundred people perished. Around 15 years ago, our circle of friends had a renegade dance party in the tunnel, which we did about once a year for several years. The tunnel was part of a trail system, but after a partial collapse, the entrance is now blocked off. At some point, we'd always venture away from the party and walk into the pitch black tunnel a mile or more before heading back. On this night, several of us walked deep into the tunnel, which runs under a mountain. We walked in almost complete darkness, using a dim red flashlight to let our eyes fully dilate. Randomly and suddenly, a small flicker of soft white light, about the size of a teardrop, sparkled and shimmered gently while calmly floating in the space just a few feet in front of and above us. The conversations abruptly stopped. After a beat, someone said, what's that? And a couple what the fucks were said. Two or three times it disappeared for a second, then reappeared a few feet over. We were all just flabbergasted, staring at the floating speck of brilliance. Someone started to panic and wanted to skedaddle back the way we came. I said, what are you, to the sparkle, but received no reply. After the brief moment passed, the sparkle was gone, and that was that. Our small group of friends contained all the types. A couple woo types, a few skeptical types, and a few moderates like myself. Some totally sober, some high, some stoned, but nobody was fucked up. We all agreed we saw something roughly matching my recollection and that we didn't know what in the ever living fuck that was. A couple years ago, me and my mother were driving back home on a late Sunday afternoon. We turned down our road, dirt and pretty long and narrow when suddenly something flew directly in front of the car, from the right, and disappeared into the forest, to the left. We both audibly said, what was that, at the same time. Below is the description of the creature. It was slightly larger than our car, which was an old red Kia. It had large, wide wings, and was completely covered in fur or feathers, but more closely resembled fur. It had four legs separate from the wings, the two front ones as eagle talons and the back ones resembled crocodile legs if they were furry and not scaly. It had a very long thin tail that tapered into a spade or arrow-like projection on the end. The tail wasn't furred. Its head resembled that of a lion with no mane, but had features as if you'd mix the lion's head with that of a Chinese dragon-esque head. The fur was light brown on the bottom and a darker brown on the top. 
After witnessing this thing flying across our road directly in front of us, we sat in shock for a while before slowly driving all the way home. If anyone has any form of answer for what this was, I'd love to hear it. Because as a wildlife biologist in training, it's really been bugging me for years. So this occurred when I was around one or two years old. My parents noticed how nearly every week, at different times and locations throughout the house, I would lift my arms up and giggle, acting like I wanted to be picked up. Strange, but I was a kid, so they didn't really pay it much mind. Fast forward a couple months, and for a few hours at a time, for a couple months, I would talk to someone in my closet and have the best time with them. He was middle-aged, with dark brown hair, plaid button-up shirt, and old leather shoes. His socks were also plaid. He wore old khakis. I do not remember if he wore glasses or not. Anyways, nearly every week I would talk to him though. I hardly remember what we talked about. I was too after all. Well, soon things changed and bruises started appearing on both of my parents' backs, as well as random cups being broken. This kept going on for a while until a few weeks before we moved when my mom found scissors with blood on them in the bathtub. Not our scissors, and no one was injured badly enough for there to be that amount of blood. So we ended up leaving after that. But I still think the guy was a nice person. Maybe he wasn't the one doing the bad things. Fast forward to hunkering down during Hurricane Katrina 2005. We can't really do much, so we decide to randomly research the history of the house we used to live in. And it turns out that a middle-aged guy who owned the house way before us his own vehicle reversed while he was working on it and killed him. Personally, I believe this is the same person I saw. So in January of 2019, I was sitting next to my best friend on a bus in Sri Lanka. We were sharing a set of earbuds and playing our favorite songs for each other. We were 19 and 20 and falling in love. He finally played his favorite song of all time, the killer's version of Romeo and Juliet. He told me it was the song he always went back to. He told me how listening to it reminded him of so many moments in his life, good and bad. I thought he used it to mark moments like this one, to always be associating it with some feeling he didn't want to lose. I wrote the name of the song down, and the next time I had Wi-Fi access, I downloaded it on Spotify. I had no data, since we were only traveling. That night, when I went to bed, I put my earphones in and put the song on repeat. It typically takes me a long time to fall asleep, so I probably listened to it over a dozen times before I finally dozed off. But it didn't feel like it, because every time it would start over, it sounded like a different song that I had never heard before. I kept checking my phone to see if I'd accidentally played something else. It didn't sound like the same song from the bus either. I tried to pin the melody and couldn't. The next day I told him, that song is amazing. I understand why you love it so much now. It sounds like a different song every time you listen. It's trippy. It just, he just stared at me with the most confused look on his face. It doesn't sound that way to you? I asked. He assured me he didn't know what I was talking about. So that night, I listened to it again on repeat, and the same thing happened, as well as every night after that for the rest of our time in Sri Lanka. After our trip, it sounded normal to me. I've listened to it hundreds of times since then, and it's always sounded the same. It happened with another song, just a few months after I got home. It was the night before my grandmother's funeral. I listened to Rush of Blood to the Head by Coldplay all night, but I didn't know what I was hearing. It sounded different every time with an indistinguishable melody.
To give a little backstory, my husband, children and I moved into our new home about two years ago. We were informed by our neighbours, who have lived across the streets for as long as I have been alive, that the previous owners died in our new little family home. We finally got settled in a few weeks later. After the children were off to bed, my husband and I were watching a movie in the living room when we both witnessed a white figure pass by our window at a decent speed. We were kind of suspicious, but wrote it off as nothing. Every night for the first year, it happened repeatedly. We weren't afraid. In fact, it was a conversation starter when we would have our frequent get-togethers in our home. We realized a couple of days had passed and we hadn't seen the figure. We had a get-together the following weekend and were outside having a small bonfire in our backyard since the winter weather had kept us inside for weeks. We saw a strange shadow across the streets illuminated by the street lamp. My friend B and I went to the fence line to investigate. We witnessed a lady facing us, hunched over with long black hair and a tattered stained white nighty. We were quite frightened, so we calmly gathered the rest of the group to come to witness what we had seen. As we're all standing at the fence line discussing what we are seeing, she rapidly looked at us and we froze. Then she quickly disappeared. In a panic, we all loaded up and went back inside the house. As time passes, we forget all about what we witnessed that night until a few weeks later when we had another get together and seen her again. This time she was closer, standing between the curb and the street. Fortunately, she did not look at us this time. Startled, we all decided to go back inside the house and call it a night. We had a few more get togethers after this and thankfully she was nowhere to be found until one night. The difference between the past encounters and now is that no one was here this time. We had experienced some weird weather for it almost being summer. It was pretty cold out, with lots of hailstorms accompanied by extreme thunderstorms. We were sitting inside playing a video game when the power went out. My husband went to the bay window to see if the neighbours across the street's power were also out, and it was. But in a very calm, but shaky voice he explained, Babe, she's back. I jokingly said of course she is, as I went to look for myself. There she was, standing at the end of our driveway. As she looked at us, she had no face. I'm really scared to know what will happen once she reaches us. I'm about nine years old at the time. I'm sleeping over at my best friend's house down in his basement. At some point in the middle of the night, I wake up to the sound of someone running down the stairs to the basement. I shoot straight up off the couch we were sleeping on. My friend somehow remains asleep. When I look over to the stairs, I see a kid standing at the bottom. I had just woken up, so I'm wiping my eyes making sure my eyes aren't playing tricks on me. He's still there, so I ask, who's there? I get no response, and now I'm horrified. He's just standing there at the bottom of the stairs. So I think it may be my best friend's brother messing with us, but they look smaller, and I'm not so sure I'm still very wary. After not receiving an answer, I ask angrily, what do you want? The little boy had stopped at the bottom of the stairs and not moved an inch. He looks me right in the eyes and says, I'm here, I'm here, I'm ready to give it my all. Very weird thing to say, I know. After hearing his voice and processing his weird response, I'm now 100% sure that this is not my friend's brother. And my friend's still sleeping on the other end of the couch. After he said, what he said, it really clicked in my nine-year-old head that this isn't a dream and I'm actually awake right now. My heart drops and I'm frozen with terror. I don't know what else to say to the kid at the bottom of the stairs, but I continue to look at him 
despite being absolutely frozen with fear. He stares right back at me, and after about 10 or 15 seconds, I ask him who he was again. He starts to give me a real sinister grin, and then he legitimately fades away right in front of my eyes. I lay back down under the covers and come to qualms with the fact that I'm awake. After about an hour of shitting my pants under the covers, I build up the courage to wake my friend up to go upstairs. I tell my friend and his family about it the next morning, and everyone tries to convince me that I was sleeping, but I know I was awake. A few years later, after they had moved out of that house, my friend's mom admits to having a few strange encounters in that house herself. I wish the kid had said a bit more, but at the same time, I guess I don't. Because that grin that he gave me after the fear came over me has stuck with me ever since. Now at 23, I still get chills when I think about that experience. If he had paired that grin with something a little more frightening than I'm here, I'm here, I'm ready to give it my all, I probably would have had to be institutionalized. I'm currently a senior in high school, and my friend and I always meet in the library during breaks. Since we aren't allowed our bags in there, I can easily check if her bag is in the foyer. This friend also recently dyed her hair from light to dark brown. This will be important later. So a few days ago, I was running late to break after talking to my teacher and went to meet her in the library. But her bag wasn't there, and she wasn't in the library at all. I started to head towards her last class, wondering if she kept in too, and I ran into her in the doorway to a hallway in the school. At first I didn't notice her, but her hair was back to light brown. I greeted her and asked her how her science class was, that she had had last period. Now for context, my friend hates school in general, and usually replies to any question I ask about her classes with yes. But this time she said, great, how was bio? This is very unlike her, and I think that's when I got a feeling of something being wrong. I kind of just gave my usual reply to her and asked her what she did in science, to which she responded with, yes. As usual, but also said that they were doing something interesting. We carried on through the hallway until we reached a door that led to a small deck and some stairs. I could sense her behind me as I walked outside, but when I heard a door shut, I turned around to find nothing. I wondered if she hadn't wanted to go outside in the rain, so went back inside to look for her, but I couldn't find her anywhere. Now, it's important to mention that my friend is very quiet and timid. I'm the only one she really talks to, and even some of the teachers don't know her name. And so I asked someone in the hallway, Hey, did Lucy come through here? Not her actual name. And they responded immediately with, Who the hell is Lucy? I thought that was your name. I shortened my name when I went to high school, and it just so happens to be the same as her first name. And that made me panic, thinking that the Mandela effect may have taken her. But when I searched my phone for photos of her, I was so relieved to find quite a few, especially ones of us together. I went to the library to check again, and her bag was there this time. The librarian teased me about the fact that I'm never late, and that Lucy has been here since break started waiting for me. I said to her, no, Lucy wasn't here when I came earlier. And the librarian shrugged and said, she definitely was. I didn't see you though, and walked away. I found Lucy sitting near a couple of my friends who were starting to get worried about me, and I asked Lucy if she'd been there. She denied it, and my other friends backed her up. Immediately after it happened, my memory of it was covered in a haze, almost as if I was dreaming. I've always been able to feel spirits. I can feel presences of my papa and cousin who died, watching over and protecting the rest of my family and me, and occasionally get visions, but I've never experienced anything like this. Did I somehow step into another world? Or what happened there?
I live in Hawaii on an island called Maui, specifically in the city of Kahulu, which is in the middle of the island. Anyway, there is a place called Hana which doesn't have as much buildings as Kahulu. It's much more natural and had plenty of trees, which makes it an excellent place to camp. My cousin, aunt and uncle from Minnesota wanted to camp there in cabins that you can rent. The night before we left, I slept next to my dad outside one of the two cabins that we rented. In the middle of the night, I woke up to the sound of footsteps, very clear footsteps. They were coming from the other cabin, so I looked over there and there was what looked like a tall Hawaiian man stepping into the cabin. It looked like he was holding a weapon called a Leo Mano, a wreath of shark teeth. I got up and rushed to the house. I was terrified, but didn't want my aunt guys to get hurt. I ran up the stairs and walked into the house. Surprisingly, everyone was still sleeping and there was no man in the house. So I walked out back to my cot and the footsteps started again, except it sounded like there were 10 or more people walking in the cabin and on the grass. I knew it was night marches. Everything added up. I knew they wouldn't pay attention to me if I didn't stand in their way. I tried not to think of it that much and I fell asleep in the next 30 minutes. When I woke up, I didn't say anything about it. My dad would have thought I was going crazy. But what creeped me out the most was that my uncle, who is Hawaiian, heard the same sound and described it the same way I heard it. For many years, I have been a scholar of philosophy, metaphysics, astrophysics, and cosmology. Over my career, I began to find interest in the paranormal, astral field, demonology, world religions, and other unexplained phenomena. I found interest in these areas because I had my fair share of unexplained supernatural experiences. I rigorously only searched for authentic material through my research, and I spent a couple of years doing that. From haunted locations to supposed demonic encounters, I never actually got anything truthful. It's always ended up as fake. Eventually, I called up a colleague who was an assistant to an archeologist, and he nicely provided me with legitimate pictures of ancient scriptures, texts, monuments, artifacts, etc., taken from actual places of discovery. One of the places that really caught my attention was a clay mask that dates back to the Babylonian area in Mesopotamia. A gray figure human-like mask with a frown is depicted. Best I can describe it as, I don't want to look at it again, which I will explain later on. After a while of digging and researching some more, I set all paranormal demonology etc studies aside because I was working long shifts at work and didn't have time for anything. So I gave it a break. A few nights pass and I start having these incredibly detailed dreams. My dreams began softly, simple but extremely detailed. For this reason, I still remember my first one. Even though it's been a year now since I dreamt of it, I saw myself walking through a field. I was able to feel the grass touch my toes. I only had a shirt and jeans on, no watch or necklace, which I typically wear. The environment was nothing insidious. A prairie field with yellowish green grass and orange looking clouds due to the sunset. Even though I was alone, in, I felt comfort. Amazing comfort, as if all my dopamine stores were being released. I then woke up from my dream and proceeded with my day. As a joke, I told my buddy at work what I dreamed about. He told me it was nothing but the brain's way of coping with stressful moments. The guy's a scientist and doesn't believe in astral or general superstitions. So I brushed it off and proceeded with my work. I get home and I'm so tired. I don't want to do anything but sleep. Before I fall asleep, I hear a faint developing ring in my right ear. I fall asleep. I start dreaming. The first thing I see is a volcanic looking surface. No fire nor heat. 
a cold, dark place enough for the eye to see. This time I'm wearing a dark red robe. I was naked underneath. But I was more confused about the place I was in. Suddenly, I started hearing screams. These screams were so expressive, so unnatural, as if someone was being tortured nerve by nerve. It was coming from an abyss. I was aware I was dreaming, and I really wanted to wake up. Even though I was aware, I had no control over the dream, no power over it. I then felt something push me, and I fell into the abyss. As I fell through the abyss, I kept hearing more and more screams. At that moment, the abyss was no longer dark, but visible enough for me to see. To my horror, I saw these deformed animals with wings and infant human heads hovering over me as I fell. I then landed on the ground, and I felt the force of the impact. It hurt insanely bad to point of actual death, but for some reason, I was still alive, and my pain was slowly fading away. I got up, and in that very second, I realized where I was. I saw hundreds of people, if not millions, being tortured with knives, maces, swords, poisons, crucifixions. I really can't express how many torture devices I saw in that dream. The environment was slight, foggy, and maintained that volcanic appearance I mentioned earlier. It was so cold, and it smelled like rotting pig intestines. I began to walk slowly, and I kept seeing these animal human beings torturing others. They're demons. One of them had two heads. One of a rooster and a snake and the body of a bear. They began chasing a man wearing Roman armor and a gold leaf headband. The men saw me and hid near me. The man frighteningly began speaking to me in Latin. It was an old form of Latin, but for some strange reason, I understood him natively. He told me he was Claudius Caesar, and he wanted his statues destroyed and to pray for his insolence. And as a reward, he would tell me where I could find his gold in the natural world. I'm guessing the real world? Shortly after, the demonic rooster-looking thing snatches him and starts to remove his genitals and skins him with the rooster's beak. I was beyond terrified, but the demons did nothing to me. It's if I were inside a protective wall. I also saw an Aztec warrior getting his organs removed and burned by various children who had elderly faces. Also, some old naked zombie looking lady was using a knife to make a face mask out of a beautiful blonde woman who was tied up near a rotting tree. Who I believe was Marilyn Monroe due to the hairstyle and facial features. The demon carved out her nose and placed it into his own nasal spine while laughing. It was utterly disgusting. It was not only humans who were being tortured, but other beings as well. A human with an elephant's head was being fed to maggots, while a bird with a human body and Egyptian clothing was being repeatedly stabbed with a staff. Of course, none of this was real, but a dream. It felt so damn realistic. I started praying and wanted to wake up. I always believe in God, and I kept praying and praying, and everything went dark again. I closed and opened my eyes, and I'm no longer hell. I'm in some kind of desert. I then saw a hooded being with my dark red robe approach me. I was again wearing the same shirt and jeans, no shoes, attire. Anyways, I couldn't see his face only until he got near me. As soon as I saw his face, my heart rate went up so fast. I saw the devil. I've never in my life seen anything remotely frightening as that face. It wasn't per se its facial deformities, but more of its negative overall appearance. My heart rate was off the roof. The entity kept looking at me. His goat-like appearance had otherworldly, hard to describe, but the closest thing I found on the internet that Margie looks like him, is the devil in Albert Dürer's Night, Dead and the Devil, Woodcut. He whispers in my ear and sounds just like me and tells me that the world ended after Christ's salvation, that God loves his creation so much 
that he gives us the option to be saved or not. The devil also mentioned that humans live once again in the natural world. A world with no meaning, but controlled by arbitrary universal and cosmic forces. The true reality beings when we die were rather resurrected. I lived with a girlfriend in a big Edwardian house in London. A former big house now split into several flats or apartments. There were two bedrooms. The spare one was shockingly chilly for no reason. You just get a chill right down your spine as soon as you walked in there. In our first week or two there, my girlfriend asked me why I kept turning around a picture of us the other way. Well, I wasn't, but it repeatedly happened with no explanation. Things started to move in front of us. Small things, small items pushed off a table or things almost being flicked. This is hard for people to believe, but it happened a number of times. And luckily a guest once saw it too. We walked into the flat and a lipstick that was on the table flew off it at speed. She jumped and asked if we saw it. We had. The weird thing was, we didn't mind. It didn't feel evil or anything. So we just accepted it and that was that. A few years later, different flat, different girlfriend. One day, we randomly started hearing footsteps around our bed. Now that was definitely not nice at all. It was very scary and loud enough to really shit us both up a lot. On the third night, I said, okay, let's think about this logically. It wasn't happening a few days back, but now it is. I suggested that we had inadvertently introduced something into our space. After some discussion, it came out that she'd bought a load of clothes in a secondhand shop at exactly the point it started. The next day, every single item that we'd recently had brought into the flat were disposed of, including all the secondhand clothes. That was it. It stopped immediately. I live in a house from the 1700s in a very historical European city. We had hauntings from day one we moved in, me and my husband. Nothing sinister, but a woman who had obviously died from a stroke and didn't realize she had passed on. Whenever she was close, you got insanely nauseous and dizzy. So I had to perform a cleansing and help her over the threshold. Both me and my husband are very sensitive to these kind of things. And we don't mind family or good natured spirits from beyond to visit us. Such as my great grandmother, who was a common visitor, noticeable by some hijinks she did when she was alive as well. Or his mother, that's the cat. However, last two months we had no visitations at all. And it stopped after my husband saw or sensed a black dog. I at first didn't react as we had previous pets appear in the corner of my eyes but it later dawned on me. Neither had a black dog, only black cats. Now to my concerns. This weekend, it's great grandma's birthday and usually a weekend of more activity from her. However, nothing. However, the cat refuses to walk in certain areas of the house and I've been increasingly seeing what I can only describe as a pitch black wolf hand in the corner of my vision at nights. We woken up by the cat freaking out more and more lately. Not the usual zoomies, but literally growling and arching his back at something unseen. Five days ago, I woke up with a large bruise on my thigh and it looks as if someone has been biting me. No wounds, just a huge mouth shaped bruise. I'm afraid we may have gotten something into our house that doesn't belong here. This happened when I was living in my old house in Mexico. I was probably around 10 or 11. So me and my sister were watching horror videos and like scary stories. And I was a very paranoid child. So I didn't want to see anymore because it wouldn't let me sleep later. That night, 
My mom slept in the room with us because my dad was away working. So it was me sleeping on the side next to my door. My sister was sleeping on the floor next to me. She volunteered to sleep there so my mom could sleep on the bed. I woke up so I could turn around and when I opened my eyes, I saw a woman or girl standing where my sister slept with dark hair and I couldn't see her face. Something I noticed is she carried a pair of scissors. I quickly turned around to face the wall and pretended I didn't see it or convinced myself it was just my imagination. The next morning, I woke up and told no one about it since it was just a dream, right? Well, my sister pulled me in my mother's room later that day and said, don't tell mom, but someone cut my hair last night. And she showed me a piece of her hair that had been chopped off. Naturally, I panicked and told her what I had seen at night. I hadn't made the connection then, but my sister did tell me she used to see a girl that sometimes would harm her in her dreams and she would wake up with similar cuts. We don't live there anymore. And when we visit, I often have nightmares, but haven't experienced anything paranormal in that house when I do go. Just an interesting story. I honestly have no idea what it could have been. So this one thing that happened to me and my buddies has been bugging me for around a year now, and I'm seeking an explanation. And after reading about all these time paradoxes, it got me thinking that we might have experienced a space-time tear, shutting, or a time gap being erased in a way. Basically, here's what we all remember and experienced. We were five guys going on a little trip to a place my buddy owns in another town as a kind of vacation. On our third day there, we decided to make a barbecue. So we started working around 11 p.m and we were finished and getting ready to eat around 2 a.m. After we finished eating, we were all sitting in a circle, sort of. We all looked at each other and got a very eerie feeling that someone was missing. And at that moment, we were all so damn sure that there were originally six of us and that someone is missing right now. We tracked the whole timeline of the thing and there never was a sixth person. But something still felt so odd and to this day, we still discussed a weird phenomenon from that day. What I believe happened is there was originally a sixth person, but at that certain moment, we all got that feeling someone had messed with time and this person got erased with all their memories, but it still had an effect on us. Maybe something remained that hinted towards there being a sixth person. A little weird experience here that I actually forgot about for many years. For sixth grade camp, the year was 2004, I went to a place called Palomar Mountains in California. Of course, most of my time there was fun. Lots of scary stories and activities. One night, about three cabins were taken outside for some scary stories by the campfire. My cabin, of course, being included in this. I was sitting next to my friend and we were towards the back of the entire group. I was really into the scary story the counselor was telling when all of a sudden my friend nudges me. He, she says, hey, something is above us. I look up above us with her when we see this big giant round plane in the sky. I say plane because once I looked at it, I could hear it make noise. The noise was that of like a jet flying over. The big round plane had a few lights underneath it. It was maybe about three to four football fields across. It was pretty close to us. And by now, it was right above the trees. It was moving very, very slowly. It didn't turn, but just glided past. I looked down to see if anyone was looking. The weird thing was that when I looked down, I couldn't hear the jet noise. And I really realized only about 15 of us were looking up while everyone else was listening to the story being told by the counselor. I looked back up and I heard the jet noise again. As I'm watching the plane start to leave and be out of sight, I think, wow, we need to tell everyone and figure out what this is. 
Finally, as the plane leaves our sight, the jet noise cuts off and we look back towards the counselor. To this day, I have no idea why, but we didn't bring it up. There was no discussion about it. We just went back to listening to the last story, got up and went back to the cabin. I actually forgot about this for five years until I was talking about UFOs with my family. And all of a sudden, this memory came back to me like a tidal wave. I was able to ask my friend if she remembers this as well, and she does. She also doesn't know why we didn't talk about it or why she didn't remember it until I reminded her about it. My uncle joked that we must have been abducted. Sometimes I wonder if we were. I used to stay in my grandma's house a lot as a child. It was mostly normal during the day, but nighttime always had a bad vibe to it. The whole town would get a heavy feeling that wouldn't let you go. Everything in there became dead after 8 p.m. because of it. My grandma's house had the main road in front. The back had a backyard that was connected to a small forest. The forest had this bush wall you could push through after crossing the wall, there was a place full of burned stuff. There were only two entrances there that I saw. I think people would take their trash there and burn it, but things never seemed different when I went there. It honestly looked haunted as fuck, and you always felt watched. But me and my siblings were dumbasses and went several times to collect random trash or toys we could sometimes find there. The last time I went there, we found a burned doll. The only recognizable thing on her face was one untouched eye. Everything else was charred beyond recognition. I obviously picked it up like a dumbass and I can honestly say that started a chain reaction. Noises started and nighttime felt haunted. My grandparents were worried enough to have us pee inside on a bucket. The bathroom was outside by the side of the house and had no door, just a curtain. Nothing too bad happened for a while until the dream started. I usually never dream or remember them, but when I do, it's mostly nightmares. I don't remember much since it happened over eight years ago, but a lady in a white dress with long black hair showed up in the dream, standing there, doing nothing, just looking at me. It basically looked like the Urana and I didn't really care for it. It creeped me out, but not enough to tell anyone. After the first dream where she showed up, I saw her in real life and that terrified me out of my mind. My grandma owns a restaurant that's by the road and the back has about 30 feet before it turns into a jungle full of really tall grass. Before the grass, there's this metal fence that fell over and rusted. No way to walk there unless you wanted to get stabbed by a piece of it. The restaurant has a back door with a clear view to it and it's only 30 to 40 feet away from the fence. I was playing by the door when out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move. I turned around to see and saw the same lady with her head down walking to the fallen fence. A calm, slow stroll as she crossed by. I knew what the Urana was and that she went for the kids so I didn't dare make a sound. Not that I could, since I was terrified and frozen still. After she walked out of view, I went straight to my grandma's room and told her. I don't think she fully believed me, but she still hugged me and didn't go away till I fell asleep. The next time I saw my sister, I told her what happened, and she said she had a dream of the same lady. She was standing by a tree, staring right at her. Years later, I asked her about it again, and she said it felt like an outer body experience. In that house, my sister started having problems with sleepwalking. Now, I don't know if it was the same night the dream happened, but my grandma told me she found my sister sleepwalking and trying to open the door to the street. My sister was really creeped out when we told her and fully believes she was almost kidnapped by the spirit. Everything calmed down for a while and about a year later, I was living with my mom again, a small two-floor house with two bedrooms, 
One for my parents and one for me and my siblings. That house had a lot of paranormal things happen. I started to wake up around 2 to 4 a.m. to random noises or heavy feelings in my chest. Steps would sound all over the first floor. Sometimes it would sound like marbles were falling down the stairs, dishes clashing in the sink. Like I said before, I would always wake during the night. The worst thing I woke up to was my sister getting slowly dragged from the bed. We share a bed. I tried calling my mom, but I couldn't speak. I just hugged my sister close and closed my eyes tightly. It stopped after a while, and I checked on my brothers the minute I could move again. After that night, I would always interlock my feet with my sisters and check on my brothers when I woke up during the night. Thankfully, it never happened again. During that time, I would sometimes go to my abuse house. It was kind of old, but mostly normal. There was a door in the kitchen that led to the backyard. On the back was a well we sometimes used, but remained closed most of the time. And on the side was a sink we used to wash clothes. During the night, you would hear water running and the sink being used. This one time, I went to check if it was my abu, but she was passed out on the couch. Didn't make it past the kitchen and went back to bed. That was the worst thing to happen there. When we moved to the US, we rented a small house, single floor with four rooms. This house had the most activity, steps all over the house, especially the hallway. The sound of chairs moving, dishes clanking in the sink, sometimes faraway voice, voices. I had an insane amount of sleep paralysis there and even had another dream with the lady. The first time I had sleep paralysis, this thing was standing over the door, hanging from the ceiling and looking at me. I could only close my eyes. It got closer the more sleep paralysis happened till I was right beside my head looking over me. After a while, everything stopped. No more waking up in the middle of the night, no sounds, no steps. Like nothing had happened. It was really weird. Like a switch had flipped or something. Years later, my sister, my abu and I were walking, talking about the paranormal stuff that happened to us. She admitted to seeing the same lady before, in person when she was younger and hiding around some clothes hanging outside, and the other when hiding behind a bathroom. She said she heard the same noise as we did, and thinking it was us, went to scold us for making so much noise at night, only to see no one. I told my grandma about it, and she said she has seen and heard her too when going to the bathroom in the house we used to stay at and said that's why she had us pee inside at night. Knowing they went to similar stuff was terrifying and it made me think it was following my family for some reason. I still believe it in some way. We moved when I was 15 and everything calmed down since house creaks are the worst that happens. Hi, my name is Camille, I'm from France, and my house is haunted. I live in my house for nearly eight years, and passing years, I've been watched constantly, and not by a human. That happened every single time. My desk was on the opposite side of my door frame and window, and every time when I'm on my PC, I needed to watch my door frame behind me, or window, to see if someone was watching, and on a day, I would watch five times if someone was watching me because I knew someone was watching me. Passing years, I told my mom about it. My parents and family in general don't believe in the paranormal. So I was basically alone about this situation and feelings, but I knew I had to talk to her someday because the situation was just driving me insane for three years. I think my mom was scared for my mental health when I told her. Just consider having a child that told you, hey mom, I'm being watched by something that I don't see. Can you help me? She didn't believe me, obviously. I kind of don't move for years and years. I was watched and when I would turn my eyes to see if someone watched me from my windows, I would see sometimes a shadow that hid itself. 
but maybe just hallucinating about it. That goes to a point when I was scared of dark because I would feeling watched and no one made the link between this and what I said to my mom years ago. Times go by and I would informating myself about paranormal by watching Le Grand JD, RIP, or a lot of French ghost hunter or even English ones. I was 12 when my grandfather died. It affected me because he was the only one that linked my father family to my family because they sort of hate us and his death really affected my family and me. Times go by when in 2019 I think my godfather dies. It was my everything because my godmother just ignored me by now. And when he died, this affected me a lot because I loved him so much, driving me to a sort of depression or mental breakdown. I was doing mental breakdowns really often because of school and stress I'd give to myself. All this story just to tell us what happened this year. By now, that was just being watched, but this year's has accelerated. So this year after COVID, I've been feeling really down, like I've been through a lot and everything went from one month that goes through a voice in a corner of my room, a feeling that an energy goes to a corner and another one, and my cat's looking exactly where I sense it, feeling watched always, and yesterday when my cans just fell from nowhere, and today I've tested why that could happen, and only when you move really hard my wooden shelf, or when you push the cans, they, they can fall, but my shelf didn't move, and my cans are accessible only by a human or a cat. My cat wasn't in my room. In short, I wanted to tell you my story of my weird house. The only rational explanations can be mental health problems, but if it was when I was young, it would have been discovered, I think. And on paranormal explanations, that can be my grandfather, my godfather, or even an unknown spirit that plays with me because I wanted to be noticed. It's only been one month that I moved out from my room to my older sister's room. She moved out and that just continued again. To add context to this, my dad passed away in a freak construction accident a few years before this happened. He was tall, slim, athletic build, he always wore a certain kind of jeans and most of his shirts were either sandy brown or gray Carhartt t-shirts. He always had a huge set of keys hanging from the loop of his belt on his left side. This set of keys easily had 40 keys on it and jingled with every step. Our house was a Lincoln log style cabin in the woods type house. You had to go up a set of stairs to get on the porch, then walk a good 10 more feet across the porch and get to the front door. Looking at the house, the stairs are on the left and the door is on the far right. The house is also built on a bit of a slope. From the top of the stairs, it's maybe eight feet to the ground. But where the door is, if you were to fall off the balcony, it's a good 12 plus foot drop. Or something you could easily jump down from and run off quickly. Sorry, this is already long, but it's important information, I promise. Now to the incident. I was chilling in the house on whatever regular day it was. The big window to the porch between the stairs and the door about eight feet wide. Had the blinds closed, but the bottom was raised so I could see out of about a foot and a half of the window, basically from someone's hip lower chest level. I was walking from the kitchen to the living room towards the door facing the window when I heard that jingle the one of my dad's keys bouncing as he made his way up the steps to our house. Then I see a person walking across the porch to the door. Jeans, grey t-shirt, keys on his hip. I'm about four steps from the front door. I hustle to it and swing it open. Nobody. It was broad daylight. I know what I saw. There's no way someone could have gotten off the porch in the literal two seconds it took me to get to the door. I had came to as good as terms as I could have been at. I don't think I was hallucinating. I haven't had anything like it happen since. But I really wish that if it was him, he would have stayed a moment longer.
Over the last few weeks, I have been hearing a little person running around the house when I'm home alone. Things sound like they are moving or crashing in the other rooms, but when I check, it's all normal. Laughter of a child in the house when I was alone and no one was on the playground. Then this week, I saw it. It stayed just outside my peripheral as I turned to look at the sound of a small person running. It was a small thing, like a child, but maybe three or four. It ran past. I heard it run down the hall towards the bedroom, and that was that. Now ghosts have never scared me. Even violent ones never bother me. But I do take offence to my youngest child, six, waking up scared at night due to something he heard or bad dreams. Leave my kid out of it, ghost. He is not your playmate. Last night, my son woke us up. He had a dream that something grabbed him and he came to our room scared. I asked my husband what time it was and he said 3am. I then get up and my phone says exactly 3am. I use the light on my phone to get dressed and check on hubby and son. I decide to just start working. I'm working from home at the moment. And I look back at my phone and it still says 3am. I know more than a few minutes have passed. I open my laptop and it says 3.07am. I look at my phone, which is still stuck at 3am, and shut it off and on. Only then does the time update. Bad enough the poor thing is scaring my son, but so strange my phone was stuck at 3am for 7 minutes. Odd. My husband has seen a shadow run into the boys' room as well, and thought it was the boys. But when he checked, they were both in the living room and no one had been near the bedrooms. So it's not just me seeing or hearing it. If it keeps waking up my son, what can I do to make it go? If it was just me, I wouldn't bother with it as they leave me alone. But it's after my baby and it does not feel friendly. A few friends of mine were into exploring abandoned places and checking locations out. Whether it's a run-down shack in the middle of nowhere or an abandoned building, we were always eager to take a look around. We don't vandalize or destroy property, we only take a look. One day, I find out that one of the cemeteries in my area is apparently haunted. It borders an old abandoned mental hospital and the cemetery was the burial ground for some of the unfortunates who died at that place. The asylum is 150 years old and it was a horrible place for those who were housed there. All up there were four of us. After 20 minutes of driving, we get out and search for the cemetery. After about 10 to 15 minutes of looking on maps and walking up and down the neighborhood, we finally came across the cemetery's entrance. It was around 11 p.m. when we go into the cemetery. It was very quiet, barely any cars on the street, and all I could hear was the distant dogs yapping about. All four of us start heading into the cemetery. We're taking this slow and using our eyes and ears to catch anything suspicious. As we're walking, I hear a faint laugh coming from the trees below. It sounded like a child. I first wrote it off as a dog barking in the distance, or just something explainable. As we continue down the track further, I hear the child laughter again. I turn to my friend who turns to me, and we both just stare at each other. We both heard the same thing coming from the woods below, and were just spooked. But that didn't stop us. We pushed on, going further into the cemetery and towards the trees. We eventually ended up getting too scared and decided to turn around and walk back. I was positioned with another friend of mine about two meters behind my other buddies. All of a sudden, I can hear heavy footsteps walking towards us to our right. I'm not kidding when I say this, but these footsteps just started picking up pace and we could hear these loud thumping footsteps just galloping at us. 
we panicked like crazy because we're looking directly at this sound and there's nobody there. It was too loud to be some sort of critter and it definitely wasn't another person. I am now 18 and I no longer urban explore places as it's too risky and I can risk heavy fines. I'm quite a skeptic and I am all ears for any logical explanation. I was three or four years old, all the way in Vermont, spending Christmas with my great aunt Rose. She took me and my baby sister, who was likely only one at the time, to a little spot where they provided sleigh rides for the occasion. It had gotten dark and we had partied most of the day until the sleighs took us to our last stop, which was this little diner slash gift shop, I think. Tiny baby me decided I could wander off and sit at one of the tables while I waited for my aunt, who was carrying my little sister, to stop talking to her friends. In front of me, on the table, was a painted checkers board, and to the side, a box of red and black checkers. Suddenly, there was a man sitting across from me. I don't remember how old he looked, but he was blonde and pale. He introduced himself as my cousin Ian, Aunt Rosa's child. He said he would teach me how to play checkers and I excitedly accepted. He won the first game, but I won the second one. After I won, I think he said something about needing to leave. And before I knew it, he was gone. I got up and ran to my Aunt Rose, smiling, telling her I'd just won my first game of checkers. She asked me, Rabbit, who did you play with? I told her it was my cousin Ian, of course. She looked at me bewildered. I told her he was a tall blonde boy who said she was his mom. Then I found out that Ian had died of a heart attack less than before I was born. Every night, after finishing my freelancing job, I sleep late like 4 a.m. or even early morning sometimes. But today, I finally got off from my work early and I'm trying to sleep. But there's this constant sound of walking. I checked twice, there's no one in the house. My mom and dad are sleeping soundly. But I'm hearing these sounds like the sound when you walk bare feet on marble or concrete floor. Those sounds are not my imagination, I promise. I can clearly hear them. They get closer and even further away sometimes. They sounded exactly like walking barefoot, but with a little pressure. The thing is, I know I'm hearing them, but I can't find a possible explanation. But that's not all. The real thing that took away my sleep is the fact that it seems to come closer and it looks like it stopped right outside my room. For a minute, I was scared. Then I thought about my mom and dad and thought they could be in trouble if it's an intruder. So I went and checked, but there was no one. So this was one of the first times I ever was truly scared by something paranormal. I was 14 at the time and my father and I had just started buying guns as I took an interest in shooting. We got an M44 Mosin Nagants made in 1953 in Poland. For those who do not know much about old guns, the Mosin Nagants is the battle rifle of Russia from pre-World War I and the, to the end of World War II. And the M44 designation is for a shortened rifle version with a bayonet that can be folded out. So we had the rifle for a while. I had shot it and everything before this event occurred. I had researched the marks of the rifle, which is why I knew where it was made and all the little details of the gun. Me being a curious history lover, I love learning anything I can about items I have. It was months since getting it. The initial thrill of getting a gun had long since worn off. And so really other than hoping to go shooting sometime soon, it was not on my mind when I went to bed. 
The reason I mention this is just that it's not assumed I am just overly imaginative. And after getting an old military gun, I just imagined all this. Anyway, the rifle was at this point the only real gun we had, besides our few 22 caliber rifles, for plinking, and they were stored in my closet. So anyway, for the actual experience, I went to bed. It was during a break, so no school, which is great because of what unfolded. I didn't sleep much. I was asleep when I woke up in the middle of the night at 2 a.m. for no reason. I looked to my closet near my bed, and the door was open, which it was never this open normally, though I never really shut the door. When looking into the closet, it was like I saw something. I walked literally into the closet that was not my closet. I can only describe it as if I was transported by the closet to a different place, which was also nighttime. And I can see ahead of me what seems to be a watchtower. I too was in a watchtower. A fence was near the watchtowers and then another further away from it. I'm then alerted to a figure moving near the fence and I raised my Mosin Nagans and fired off a round, which caused a horrible scream, chambered the next round and fired again, which ceased the memory. I'm standing in my closet now, truly my closet. Nothing happened really in this change. It's like having some hologram disappear and reveal my real surroundings or something. The feeling though, is as if I was pulled back. It's hard to describe. With this, I left my closet and sat down in bed, wondering what the actual fuck happened. But I did end up falling back asleep, and the next morning, I woke up early, 8 a.m. or so, which is abnormal for me as I'm more of a 10 a.m. person. Don't judge me, I'm just not a morning person unless I must be. As I woke up, I looked to my closet and saw a dark figure peeking out of it. I didn't even scream. I let out a squeak of fear. I wasn't even thinking of last night. I just felt there was someone that broke into my house and was looking at me, even though there was no reason he would be a dark shadow instead of a detailed human being as my room was very well lit by now. But yet, nothing was there. The next night, I woke up at 2 a.m. to find a dark shadow once more looking at me from my closet. I will overstate the obvious. It was pitch black night and I'm seeing a shadow figure. Yes, this sounds absolutely absurd because black on black doesn't really show itself. I'm a long time drama club kid and I know this, which is why this freaks me out still. Yet, I saw this figure. A dark figure as clear as the one I saw before. I immediately bolted from my parents' room, screaming my, screaming my lungs out as I ran. I explained in a sheer panic how there was a person in my closet and that someone was in the house. But once we're back in my room, nothing. This repeated the following night. The only difference is the figure was outside of the closet now and the same effect I ran screaming. The following night, the same thing, but now it's looking down at me from next to my bed. And again, I ran fleeing. By this point, something connected for me. And I also demanded the rifle be moved from my closet. And it was placed in my parents' bedroom. With this, it ceased. All of it. Since then, I refused to ever have the gun in my bedroom when I sleep and it remains locked away in a gun safe we now have. Now, I'm a pretty skeptical person, more so today than I was then. With that, I'm very much aware of sleep paralysis and all of those things. But that makes no sense here, as none of the times was I unable to move. I was able to get up and move to the closets and get up and flee screaming like a madman. An atheist, non-believing friend I told actually referenced some gulag pictures which matched my dream extremely closely, which freaked me out as I had never even really heard of a gulag, yet when I had the experience and I had never researched them before. More so is the fact that gulags shouldn't explain it as they were not a Polish thing, but a Stalinist thing which ended with his death in 1953. 
Everything in my mind wants to explain this way, but yet nothing explains why this happens. I don't disbelieve in the paranormal. Even as a skeptic, I do believe stuff can happen. And I can only reach the conclusion that I saw something that once happened. But to who, why and where? I truly don't know. I put this as debunk this simply because honestly, I would love to believe it was not real and have someone explain it away. Because the thought that someone is attached to this gun is tragic. My mom has told me before that when I was about three, me and her and my dad were driving through Arizona or New Mexico on our way to Albuquerque to see family. The car was almost out of gas and this was before smartphones. It was in 2003. We were in a town that we'd never stopped in before, but apparently I gave my parents directions down a weird dirt road and didn't look like it went anywhere, but, then, but that led right to a small gas station hidden from the main road, no signs or anything. I'm surprised they listened to a three-year-old, to be honest, especially when you can't waste gas on a child's whim. So I must have sounded really certain or something. I'll ask them about it again soon, actually. Anyway, they filled up and we continued driving and they were weirded out, but decided to forget about it. As far as explanations, either I lived in that town in a past life or I had a psychic ability as a child. Or, my parents are morons and it was clearly visible and only I saw it. Unfortunately, my parents are not morons at all, so I don't think it's that one. Also, it's worth noting that I haven't done anything exactly like that since. But I do have really strong intuition about when it's time to leave a place or which direction to go into to get help, for example. Anyway, yeah, that's it. So, maybe a week ago, at my friend's suggestion, I asked my spirit guides for guidance. If you believe in that sort of thing, or any of this, bear with me. An owl landed on top of the flagpole in my yard last night. I spent a lot of time in my car smoking cigarettes and listening to music, so that's why I was out there. So after that, I subconsciously started directing my prayers to the top of the flagpole. Keep in mind, there's no flag on it, just a knob of some sort in an odd shape, like a bird almost. I don't think this knob is anything itself. But here's the thing. One night while looking at it, I realized it was shifting. The dark silhouette of it looked like it was subtly changing and moving, like the way a flame behaves almost but it's dark because it's a silhouette at night. I realized that this shifting shadow type energy is something I've seen before and that scared me. I was worried because it looks like shadow people, the way their silhouette shifts. But for some reason, I decided to talk to it. Now, I know I might sound crazy at this point, but there's more. I talked to it a lot and it can't really respond, but it did tell me its name is Tether. That's one of the only things I was able to understand from it. Yeah, I know. Kind of a creepy name. That seemed like a red flag to me too. But the owl landed there, so I figured it must be the same thing. Or they're connected. I've been sharing my problems with Tether and asking him to help me. I made it clear that he's not allowed inside the house and that in return for being chill with me, I dedicate tobacco burnings to him, cigarettes. Some Native American tribes used to burn tobacco to spirits for reference and I am half Native American. Anyway, everything was fine, but I noticed the other night the gate was wide open, creepy. And then tonight the passenger seats of my car was fully reclined. I told Tether not to move things anymore because it makes me uncomfortable. That was a couple hours ago. I've talked to my friends about this because she sees stuff too. 
And she said shadow isn't always bad. It might just be the only way to perceive it. She called it a gnome or a fairy. That's why I've been treating it like an acquaintance. But I can't help wonder if it's something else. Does anyone have any insight on this? And don't just be alarmist and jump to the worst case scenario, please. Like, don't say something if you don't know what you're talking about. But I do want to hear your thoughts if you've experienced anything like this. So the night before I kept waking up in three-ish hour intervals and had strong dreams each time. The last time I went to sleep, which was probably three to four AM, I assume I was asleep, but I heard a conversation about me, like people were in the room with me. A woman said something about giving me many chances during 1783 and long before that year. After saying that, I felt something nibble and lick me from my lower stomach on down, and I woke up. I would normally just forget about something like this because it was very strange, and maybe my mind was going nuts. The voice sounded so real and I felt real touch on my body. I also have no interest in anything sex sexual, or even love in that way. Personally, it isn't for me right now, and I don't have trouble being without it. Last night, I felt uncomfortable again before going to sleep, but only woke up once around 3.30 before going back to bed. I don't know where this feeling is coming from, but I've done everything I could do to be comfortable with no result in change. When I went back to sleep, I had a dream well to put it short, some kind of partly exclusive to woman that ended in an orgy. I ended up leaving this area because I wanted to wake up from this place, but I felt stunned all of a sudden and began to wake up. As I wake up, I feel someone on top of me with their tongue in my mouth and I'm holding them. I tried to open my eyes as quickly as I'm panicking for good reason. Nothing was there. I know this might be an inappropriate story and I'm not overthinking it. It's just something I can't get out of my head. It all felt very real and I'm unsure how to feel, let alone express anything. It's also a rather embarrassing thing to talk about, especially when such things are never on my mind. Whether more medical, psychological or paranormal answers, Hello, I'm a 34 year old French guy. I've been thinking a lot about my youth recently and I've noticed a few weird things happened when I was living at my parents. I'm usually not fond of weird or paranormal things, but the more I think of it, the more it's weird. I want to talk about it, but I don't feel comfortable doing it with my friends. All the follow happened in Le Havre in France where I was born in the apartments my parents lived in before I was born and until they both moved away. The first thing I recall is that one night, I was around six or seven years old, I heard noise from the kitchen. It was loud. I went there and my mom was there. We had five or six pans of different sizes hanged above the oven. They were all moving and making noise, hitting each other. My mom told me to go to bed. I wasn't very scared at this time, just half asleep and wondering what was happening. But then, maybe some weeks or a few months later, this happened again. The sound wasn't chaotic, but more like bells, like on top of churches. This time I was scared like shit and sis not get up. I remember that after my dad changed some furniture in the kitchen and the pans were inside each other on the counter next to the sink. I'm not hanged anymore. The next ones are very cliche. They happened when I was nine, my sister was six. She had a baby doll that could walk on his four, move its head and make baby laughs with batteries in it. We stored our toys in a box shaped like a chest 
in each one's room. One night, I hear my mom scream. I came to see, and the baby doll was in the middle of the hallway, walking without sound and without its head. Mom rushed to it, removed the batteries and told me to go to bed. The morning after, she threw away the doll and its head, which was in the toy box, saying it's broken. My sister was sad because they were not awoken by what happened the previous night and didn't understand. In the same fashion, she had a big dog plush, as big as me. She used as a seat in her room. Many times that dog plush was found in the morning, in the living room. My sister said it was not her who moved it. I believed her. The plush was bigger than her. At a point, my dad threw it away, saying it was dirty and couldn't be washed. Then this happened when I was around 11 or 12, I think. My sister and I were playing Pokemon cards on the floor in my room, the real card game, when suddenly a large furniture that was next to us fell on us. I moved quick enough to hold it before it fell and my sister rushed to ask help from our dad. He was pissed and accused us. We told him we were just playing cards. That furniture was moved in the living room, not long ago. That's how I ended up having the computer in my room because they switched that big furniture with the computer desk. A thing that was disturbing, both my parents were smokers and so was my sister and I when we reached 15 or 16. In the living room we used to smoke so after some years the walls turned yellowish so my dad washed them and painted them white again. But there was a spot which never turned yellow, right in the middle of a wall. It wasn't pure white, but you could see the difference. For this one, I was older, maybe 16 or 17. During the nights, my TV switched on by itself. So that's a French thing. On channel six on Fridays, there was a series like Buffy, Charmed, X-Files, and then there were adult series like Sex and the City or Ali McBeal. After that, during the night, there was music videos, usually alternative music or metal. I switched off the TV after watching Sex and the City, fell asleep, and the TV switched back on by itself during a weird music video clip with a girl crucified. It scared me a lot. I jumped out of bed and unplugged the TV. After that, I unplugged the TV every night. I left that apartment when I was 19 years old to move in with my now ex-boyfriend. My sister did the same two years after me. My family didn't end well after that and I swear this is true. My mom was diagnosed with cancer short term after I left. She was cured but got another one right after that. She decided to divorce to live alone and not be a burden to my dad. She left and two years after that committed suicide because she was diagnosed with another cancer and she was too tired to fight. My father was still living in the apartment. Even though my parents divorced, they were still very close. One year after my mom passed away, my father tried to do the same with pills and alcohol, but I found him asleep on the kitchen table, called 112, the French 911, and he was saved. He's alive, but suffers from failures in his brain and is in a state where he can't live alone, work, or even remember anything. So he's in a special medical place where people take care of him and people like him. He stayed some weeks in the hospital before moving to that place. During that time, I usually went to his apartment to clean the mess and to bring him stuff like clothes and all. When he moved to the medical place, I came home to take the last stuff he needed to move out and the ceiling of the kitchen collapsed at the exact same place I found my father sleeping. It was a shock because it was the place he spent the most time watching TV, drinking coffee or wine. My boyfriend was with me so he picked up the stuff needed. We left and never came back. We paid a company to remove the furniture and insurance dealt with the damages. I already cut ties with my sister who became homophobic with time. Broke up with my boyfriend not long after that, not related at all, and moved to Paris.
So I was sleeping in my bed a few years ago. I live up in the mountains by the border of a national forest. I was home alone all summer and I would sleep a lot of the days away up there in the quiet mountains of a small unincorporated neighborhood. So one day I had a very vivid dream. Sometimes I would get sleep paralysis where I would see shadow beings standing by my bed trying to attack me. But this time standing by my bed was a regular man. His style looked as if he was from the 1970s. He was a regular looking man, maybe in his mid twenties. An African American man who was wearing a red t-shirt and blue jeans. In my dream, he was standing by my bedside table talking to me. I could make out what he was saying as he pointed up to the top shelf of my closet. From his mouth came the words, you might want to get rid of that voodoo, pointing. I immediately woke up and wanted to see if it was just a dream. I stood up to look to see what he was pointing in my closet. I wanted to know once and for all if it was all in my head or if there was truth to the paranormal world. Searching in the back of my closet where he had pointed at first, I found nothing because I had never used that top shelf since moving in the home. But reaching behind the shelf, I found something hidden intentionally behind the middle plank of the shelf wood. And I pulled out a rolled up scroll of paper and out of it fell a lock of braided golden hair. The rolled up paper had something written on it with a very faint pencil in another language of cursive writing that I couldn't quite read and strange symbols. I had finally found physical tangible proof of the paranormal realm meaning I had indeed just contacted a spirit and this wasn't just a dream. After some research, I found out this braided lock of hair hidden in the home is what is called a witch's ladder and is indeed black magic. This African American spirit had revealed to me that voodoo is a real power in our universe. And this had such profound implications. It changed the way I look at the world. The spirit said one more thing before leaving. He told me that the heavy metal t-shirts and posters I had in my room had evil power to them. And his final message before leaving was, Jesus is king. And he told me to keep playing the guitar. As he left, he morphed into a spirit animal like a black panther of gemstones. As for the lock of hair, unfortunately, I put it in a Ziploc bag. I wanted to study its power. I finally have proof of the paranormal realm. I couldn't just throw it away. I wanted to see if I can take it to a laboratory to be studied and if it radiates any strange electromagnetic fields. Imagine if we could actually measure black magic. That would be the greatest rediscovery of our time. This could be the ultimate secret weapon used against mankind, especially from high sorcerers or witchcraft practitioners in government and corporations. I moved to my current address just a few months ago. And as my family and I were moving in, our upstairs neighbor told us that the house is fairly active for paranormal activity. I didn't really know what to think. I don't consider myself a skeptic or a believer, but there are truly no explanations for the things I've experienced. The first big experience I had in the house was a few days after we started moving in. We we're only moving from another city over. So we decided to kind of take our time with the move. My mom and brother had taken the U-Haul back to the apartment to load up belongings while I stayed behind and started to move the boxes into rooms. I was moving boxes from the living room into the kitchen. And when I looked up to look out the window, I found a man in an old black suit and hat walking down the sidewalk to the backyard. He didn't look at me, he just walked straight back. I thought at first that he was possibly the property manager or owner. I opened up the back door to go and meet him, but he had disappeared. That was before the neighbor warned me. He told me that the malicious activity mostly takes place in the basement. Snarls, thrown rocks, scratches. 
I've only experienced knocking sounds and weird shadows and his son's bedroom upstairs. He told me his son was dragged out of bed by the ankles. Most of what I've experienced has been in the kitchen. I often hear people walking upstairs in areas that have since been boarded up. There's a staircase that the owners boarded up and turned into a pantry. Stuff is constantly getting knocked off, knocked off countertops and thrown to the floor. I was also grabbed once when sweeping the floor. I haven't really given it any attention or tried to contact or communicate because it hasn't really impacted me. A lot of it I just thought was weird and figured it's an old house. Old houses do weird things. Last night was completely different. It was around 2 to 2.30 in the morning. I was in bed, trying my best to sleep, when I heard something in the living room or kitchen make the weirdest noise I've ever heard in my life. It sounded like a man yelling, trying to mimic a cat in heat. It wasn't my cat. He's nurtured and was asleep at, by my feet. I mentioned mimicry in the title because sometimes my cat makes yowling noises when he's out in the kitchen. He really likes the way his meowing and carrying on echoes back to him. This was not that sound. It was not a cat outside. I have the windows closed and the air conditioning on. This sound was definitely inside the house. I have no idea what could have made this noise other than something supernatural. It scared the hell out of me and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I'm kind of concerned. I don't know if I should truly be concerned. Is this a sign that whatever entities are in the house are getting bolder? Are they trying to target my cat? I'd love to hear if you have any ideas on what it could be or if you've experienced similar things especially what happened after. When I was 17, my friend George was attacked by something supernatural right in front of me. My friends and I were very intrigued by Ouija boards towards the end of high school. We spent several nights over a few months cramming together and hovering over a planchet. We had a variety of experiences using the Ouija board, most of which you could describe as mildly supernatural or just a plain old coincidence. One of the places we would frequent was the garage in George's family home. Like most garages, it was dark, damp and cluttered. George was as intrigued by the Ouija board as we all were. That is, until it started to target George. Over the course of different sittings, we would ask it all kinds of questions like who it was, what it wanted, how many fingers are behind my back. We still weren't convinced it was legit. We had the spirit tell us who they were and when prompted for what they wanted, they replied, kill George. Needless to say, George was spooked, but in order to save face, he persevered. A sitting following that, we had asked the same questions. As the conversation developed, a now different spirit had changed its mind and decided it was the previous spirit and that it still wanted to kill George. This, paired with several events that George had experienced himself in the nights that followed, had driven George away from our little seances. We, however, were still more than happy to tinker around and were not satisfied yet. On the last night we played with the Ouija board, we set up in George's garage as we usually did. He said that he had no problem with us using it in his garage and in his presence, he just didn't want to participate. That night, it was just George, two girls and I. We turned out the lights and set up the board. We even lit a candle or two for good effect. George and one girl sat across from the other girl and I. We were all in coats because it was winter and the garage was poorly insulated. The three of us, with our hands on the planchet, had barely even begun when George's coat arm caught on fire. I remember, him, I remember him watching him fling his arm around as he tried to smother the flame. I immediately jumped up and turned on the lights. It didn't take long for George to put out the flame. We quickly pile out of the garage into his basement 
and after a few moments of panic and confusion, we divert our attention towards George. He took off his coat and swore his arm was fine. There wasn't a single mark on his skin. Then we diverted our attention to the newly charred coat arm. The burn was about the radius of a fist, and it burned deeply through the layers, just shy of the inner layer of cloth. The most startling part was that it was undeniably the shape of a goat's hoof. We hid the coat away for several days. Once we gained the courage, George and I pulled it back out in an attempt to debunk our little experience. After all, there were open flames in the room, and we had a cigarette in his hand. We applied a cigarette directly onto the opposite coat arm, several times. We took a lighter to it in another attempt to simulate the same kind of flame. No matter what we tried, we couldn't come close to recreating the hoof-like burn. Over time, I thought that maybe her George had decided to stage the whole thing in an effort to deter us from the Ouija board. He certainly had motive. That was 10 years ago. George and I are still great friends. Occasionally, I get confident that I can get him to fess up and I press him on the subject. It's been 10 years and he still has the same response. That he loved that coat and he was just as surprised and terrified as we were. Personally, I don't believe he staged it. I believe that, that what we experienced was authentic. My perspective on life has never been the same since. This happened years ago, in about 1997 when I was 12 or 13, and I still haven't come up with a good explanation for it. My mum and I decided to repaint my bedroom, so this particular day we started by moving all of my furniture into the centre of the room, apart from my bed, which we moved in pieces onto the landing outside my bedroom. The bed was a single divan, so there was a fairly sturdy base, with drawers in, so heavy too. And then there was a headboard, a mattress and bedding. At the time, we lived in a big Victorian house. I'm in England. And my bedroom was down a long corridor, with the th other three bedrooms on the opposite side of the house. For context, I never really liked that house and had a bad feeling about it right from when we moved in, when I was four. And other people said the same over the years too. There were a few other odd occurrences too, but this one was the weirdest by far. So that day, we closed my bedroom door and set to painting my walls. This took all afternoon, though we had a break, so we're in and out of my bedroom a couple times. Once we'd finished painting, my mum had an appointment for a plumber to come round to diagnose a problem with the boiler. It wasn't there long, maybe 10 minutes at most. And then we had dinner. It was early evening when my mum said we could probably put all my furniture back into my room and get it ready for me to sleep that night. However, we moved all the furniture from the middle of my room back into place, then went to get my bed and it was just gone. We couldn't work out where it was and probably stood in the corridor outside my bedroom for five minutes discussing whether we were losing our minds. Then we set off looking for it checking other rooms, and eventually I found it, in my mum's bedroom, on top of my mum's bed. It was set out exactly as it should be, with the div and base the right way up, the mattress on top, the headboard in the right place, etc. It was ready to be slept on, except it was on top of my mum's bed, in her bedroom. I can still remember the feeling I had pushing open my mum's bedroom door, and seeing it, and just knowing something really freaking weird had happened. I was really scared, and so was my mum. Though initially she tried to hide it, saying things like, there has to be an explanation, etc. However, we talked it round endlessly and have done a hundred times since, and we've never come up with an explanation. My mum even called the plumber that night to ask if he'd moved it, and he was very perplexed and said no, because... Why would he have done? And more importantly, how could he have done when it was he was only there for 10 minutes and was checking something on the boiler the whole time? 
I should also add that my sister aged 10 was in the house at the time of this incident, but was watching films and playing downstairs. She also freaked out and started crying, which earned me a ban of ever talking about it in front of her. The layout of the house meant the bed had to have been moved along the corridor from my room and then moved round three corners to get into my mum's bedroom before being lifted up onto her bed. It was a two person job for us to move it back and because the base was bulky, I think even someone really strong would have struggled to move it alone. So I feel certain the plumber couldn't have done it and neither could my little sister. One thing I've always wondered is at what point the bed moved. We were in and out of my bedroom all day, but we only noticed it wasn't there when we went to get to put it back. I have no idea what happened, but when I think about it now, it still freaks me the fuck out. When I was eight or nine, I was in the bathroom and for some reason, I decided to stand underneath the vent. I don't know what prompted this need to stand directly under the vent, but I did so anyway. I was brushing my hair and humming when suddenly a woman's voice, she sounded 40ish, told me to look up. This scared me so much that I bolted down the stairs to ask my mom, who was very young, just to find that I was home alone. A lot of creepy stuff happened at that house, but the surprisingly the house was incredibly new. I bolted to my best friend's house. She lived next door. It didn't end there. I lived in the same house and the houses were packed together really tight. A large gutter was attached to the house, two stories, next to mine, my best friend's house. There were windows, but they didn't open except for a small inch. I had a window that faced the gutter. One night, I was in my bedroom looking out the window. It was on the second floor. I had looked out initially because I had heard little clanging noises and assumed my friend was pushing small rocks through that little inch gap. When I peeked the curtains a tiny bit, the person was standing on the gutter, trying to peer into my room. I immediately screamed and yelled at my sister to get my mom and that there was someone on the gutter. While my sister and I cried hysterically, my mom ran in and looked through the curtains. No one was there. This occurred two weeks after the first event. My sister and I swear to this day that a person or thing was looking through our curtains that night. My family moved out barely a month later. Before we moved, the creepy events continued so often that we stayed at a hotel most nights some of which were knocks on the ceiling, rustling in vents, and sometimes people looking through windows. The house was torn down a year after we moved. So first, I have to explain the story as best as I can. Basically, my family and I moved into this house a while ago maybe like eight years or so. But ever since we moved out, my family swears they keep seeing things around the house. I've actually moved out with my boyfriend not that long ago, but I still visit very often. Very specifically, my family thinks they see a ghost around the house that looks exactly like me, and it's freaking me out. And I know it's not me that they're seeing, because the times where they see this ghost don't make sense and sometimes I'm not even home. It's happened a couple times, but I'll just write down a few examples. The first time it happened, I was playing on the computer in my parents' room when I noticed my mom walk down the hallway to my room. She called out my name and I asked her what's up. She came out really confused because according to her, she had followed me all the way from the kitchen into my closet in my room. When she got to the closet, there was no one there. I had been on the computer the whole time. I was even on it when I saw her pass her room to go into my own. When she told me this, it really freaked me out. And I just told her I didn't want to keep talking about it. I get scared super easily. 
The second time, I was helping my mom out with groceries. She was in the garage bringing bags in, and I was in the kitchen putting everything away. While I was putting something up, she came in all mad, saying that she was struggling to get some bags and I was just standing beside her watching her struggle. But that wasn't me. Apparently, I was watching her struggling to pick up some bags from the truck floor. And when she turned around to ask me for help, I just stared her down. Again, that really scared me. Another time, my dad was telling me about something that happened when he was taking care of my sisters while my mom and I were out. Now, my dad does not believe in any kind of ghosts or supernatural things. But apparently, while taking care of my sisters, my dad heard what sounded like someone trying to open the sliding door that leads to the backyard. He immediately got up and went to check on the door to make sure no one wanted to break in or something. But when he got there, the door was shaking by itself very violently. It looks like someone was trying to really hard to try to open the door and had the lock stick on being on the other side to keep it closed, the door would have slid open. It stopped about a few seconds when my dad got there. Even my dad got scared and I've never seen him this freaked out before. My two little sisters also heard the door. Now, I had personally never had a supernatural experience in the house, but a few weeks before I moved out, I was home alone. I was taking a shower and I heard a huge bang. It sounded like the front door had been swung open, and then after that, it started sounding like someone was opening and closing doors and cabinets. I was so scared because it sounded like someone had broken into the house. I was defenseless and in the freaking shower. So I got out the shower, grabbed my phone and called my mom crying. All the while doors and cabinets were still opening and closing. My dad got onto the cameras they have in the house and they didn't see anyone. There was no one in the house and nothing was being moved around. It stopped after my dad said that through the phone. Those are some of the examples of what's been going on. It terrifies me to think that one day I could possibly be staring right at someone who looks exactly like me in the middle of the night. I've never seen her and I don't want to. What could it mean that the ghost looks exactly like me? I went to Toronto when I was 15. I was staying with a Filipino family. They lived in a huge condo and back then I barely spoke English. I got lost in the subway line and it was midnight when I took the elevator. I was so drowsy and weary that I forgot which flat I was staying in. So I pressed the bottoms as my gut said. The elevator started, to, started going up and down flats. It didn't take a lot of time but it was as if many people had called for it on random floors. When it reached the tenth, it was pitch black. There was nothing, even less a freaking floor. I smashed the door close button and the doors closed after the elevator had taken its sweet time. I got so afraid that I decided to go down to the lobby and climb the emergency stairs as fast as a 15 year old me could. After that experience, I think that I unwittingly remembered where I was staying, so I climbed to the 12th flat, and when I did so, it was 3 a.m. So it took me a whole hour to climb the stairs, but it couldn't have taken me more than one and a half hours to return to the apartments. So I cannot believe that I was about two hours inside the elevator, lost in whatever kind of limbo that dark flat was. When I was 17, I made reading English stories out loud a habit in order to get used to pronouncing the language. I never cared about a knocking sound coming out the street next to my room. I got my room surrounded by windows, so I always find myself hearing just everything from the street. So this knocking on a wall was nothing special. But one day, as I was reading my daily story out loud, I jumped from my bed when I heard this freaking knocking from outside my window. And you know, I live in the freaking second floor. So from then on, things started to become really, really messed up. 
Every freaking night at 8 or 9 p.m., a putrid stench appeared in my room and I can tell you my brother and mother smelled it too. We cleaned my room and checked any nook and cranny, but failed to find anything that could have been rotting and causing that stench. The knockings didn't stop, by the way. They kept on happening, even beginning from afar and getting closer until reaching my window. My door kept on slamming shut or open, and with all this and my school life, I was sleep deprived almost every day. One day, I reached my limit and slept like a log, but in the middle of the night, a voice from beside my bed woke me up and kept insisting on continuing my storytelling. I couldn't even react or be afraid. I was exhausted to the point I unwittingly tried to just mutter whatever for it to live me at ease. I couldn't, of course. Then one fateful day, my aunt came to talk to me and told me, do not worry, I have told that imp to leave you alone. It came to me in a dream and I told him off. He was so engrossed with your storytelling. I was shocked and from then on, it stopped for good. Some years ago, I worked for a solar firm as a warehouse manager. I was in charge of their warehouse, which was located at the Kipapa Caves. The warehouse was two rented caves in the surrounding lots, which were fenced in. These caves were old military storage units dug into the gulch walls. The caves were about 200 feet deep, 20 feet wide and tall, reinforced with concrete. The solar firm stored their equipment and materials in the caves. The lots were where their vehicles, heavy machinery, and a few 40-inch containers were held. I worked there with my driver. The caves had no electricity or plumbing, so a solar system and backup generator powered the caves and a porta potty provided relief. Call reception was spotty at best, so I'd have to drive out to make the calls. When I started working there, I had no information on the history of Kipapa Gulch. My work schedule was 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. When I started work a lot of times, it was still dark, so when I got there, I had to power up the caves. If the batteries of the solar system didn't have enough juice, I'd have to power up the generator. I'd normally have to do this using only the light from my phone. It was pretty quiet at our units. The neighboring caves were quite a distance away and they were primarily used as storage, so we really didn't see anyone around. Rarely a truck would pass by going up to the units further up the gulch. At first, it was like any other workplace, nothing out of the ordinary. But soon after, I started to notice some weird happenings. The first thing I noticed that was weird was the dead animals. Walking around the sites, I would find dead Jackson chameleons all over the place. They were just there on the ground, dead. I figured cats were getting them, but I also noticed their carcasses were intact without damage. Looks like they just fell from the trees around the caves. There were also a lot of dead mongoose, minor birds, owls, pigeons and ducks. All intact carcasses with no predatory marks like bites or scratches. Pretty weird, yeah? Now onto the really weird stuff. Every few days or so, I would hear banging coming from inside the containers. The containers were under lock and key. Every time I would hear the banging, I would have to unlock and open the containers and make sure nobody was inside. I would open the containers, find nobody or any animals inside. After a few weeks of this, I said fuck it and stopped checking. I figured the materials inside were adjusting to temperature changes. Hmm, okay. While working in the cave one day, walking to the back end, passing a certain spot, I smelled the strong sense of body odor. It was like I passed by very close to somebody, but nobody was there in the cave that day but me. I walked to the back of the cave, did what I needed to do back there, and proceeded to walk back to the front of the cave. As soon as I got to the spot where I first smelled the B.O., I again smelled the strong odor. Just as before, it seemed like I just passed by very close to somebody. I got to the entrance of the cave 
and quickly checked if I forgot to put deodorant on during my morning routine. But no, I did have my deodorant on. Are my mind playing tricks on me? I had a small desk set up at the entrance of the cave where I would work on a laptop. I would check emails from the office and do paperwork. Every so often, I would hear noises coming from the back of the caves. The noises were like something moving, and it sounded like something large, bigger than a mongoose or cat. At first, I would go back and check it out, but after quite a few times of finding nothing there, I said, fuck it. I chalked it up to equipment adjusting to temperature changes. Mm, okay, again. One early morning, while it was still dark, before my driver left on his route, we heard a woman screaming coming from above the caves. The gulch walls were about 100 feet up and the sounds came from up top. It sounded like domestics and went on for about 15 minutes. My driver and I figured there was subdivision up there and a couple were having it out. A few weeks later during a lull in work, my driver and I decided to drive up the gulch and check out the other caves. We drove about a mile up the gulch and came to the last cave. From there, we could see our cave and what was directly above it. To our amazement, on the plateau above our cave, there was no subdivision, no house, no roads, no nothing. Who was up there screaming? What the fuck? We had a lot of machinery, vehicles, electronics, mechanical equipment, solar systems, etc. Everything would seem to crap out, even our personal vehicles and property. We would have to call our technicians to come and repair the equipment and machinery. They were constantly there repairing stuff. But what was weird was a lot of times they would come down and find nothing wrong with the equipment, where all of a sudden the equipment started to work fine. After a while of this, we started to video ourselves starting up equipment so we could show them we were doing it correctly and the equipment in fact was not working before we called for repair. But this is the creepiest thing that happened to me there. One day, I loaded my driver up and he left for his route. I then had to go do my business. I went into the porta potty and locked the door. Before I could do anything, the stall began to shake back and forth. I yelled out thinking my driver came back and was playing a trick on me. I unlocked the door, hopped out thinking I would find my driver laughing. But no one was there. I ran up the cave to see if anybody was around. Again, nobody there. I called my driver, the call went through and he was already on the freeway. He thought I was crazy after I told him what happened. After that, I tried not to use the porta potty as much as I could. After a year there, I was laid off due to a slump in the solar business. Only then, I decided to seek out the history of the place. Look up the history of an old Hawaii Kipapa Gulch and let me know what you think. My, 23, non-binary, boyfriend, 25, male, and I moved into a new apartment in May this year, and we have been experiencing some weird things since then. The first thing I noticed was when I was sleeping in one morning. My boyfriend was already awake playing video games in the living room. I was woken up to a woman's voice that sounded like a very soft and gentle voice, but also sounded like the woman was very serious. It sounded urgent. She just said, no, no, no. No, no, each no sounding more pronounced. I woke up very confused and assumed that my boyfriend had a guest over. It sounded like a disagreement, so I quickly got out of bed and went to see what was wrong. I swear, on the way to the living room, I was still hearing mumbling voices in a conversation. I'm sure you guessed, there was no one there. When I talked to my boyfriend, he said there wasn't any voice. His video games were plugged into his headset, so it wasn't the TV. I've had experiences with hallucinations when falling asleep or waking up in my younger years, although it had been years since that last happened. I assumed it was just that and thought nothing more of it. That was until my boyfriend started experiencing things as well. 
A couple nights later, he woke up to the same voice. He described it as an older woman's voice that was soft and gentle, and it said, no, no. Don't worry about it, I've got it. It again sounded clear, as if he was just having a conversation with someone in the room. This one somehow scares me more. He said he was waking but fully ache when he heard it. At first, he thought it was me, but I was still asleep. He shook me awake because he was so unnerved. The scariest thing was maybe a couple of weeks after that. My boyfriend had gotten up to pee in the middle of the night and when he came back, I was sitting up and looking at him. Or more accurately, my side of the bed had a figure sitting up looking at him, but it wasn't me. It took my boyfriend a moment to realize he could also see me laying in my normal spot. It was like this figure was sitting up on top of me. Someone else was in my spot too, just staring at my boyfriend. He turned on the light, waking me up, but when he did, the figure vanished. He was very shaken up then too. I always hear noises when I'm home alone. We've had paranormal experiences in the past, but not like this. We smudge every time something scary happens and things lighten up for a couple days. But considering there was nothing for the first few months we lived here, I'm nervous this is escalating. Any advice or feedback is appreciated. Before I begin the encounter, I would like to provide backstory. I live in Pennsylvania, and during this particular encounter, I was at my aunt's. She has three kids and her house is about three to five miles down a remote dirt road off of a highway through a rural area. She's approximately 25 minutes away from a store and 35 away from the police. And before I start, understand that I do not usually believe in supernatural things. It was about three or four months ago. I was at my aunt's for a birthday party. Got there at around 2 p.m. and by 7 p.m. we were ready to leave. My cousins, her kids, asked if I could stay over because they don't see me very often. I agreed, as I would enjoy my time with them. So, after the party, and after everyone had left, it was my aunt, her three kids, and her husband and I. My aunt and uncle went to bed around 9.30 or 10pm. I stayed up with the youngest cousin, who we will call Amy. Amy and I were in the living room watching some criminal minds up until about 11 p.m. She decided to go to bed and I stayed up watching the show. Mind you, it's now pitch black outside and I am in the middle of the woods. For this factor, they had motion activated lights outside. As I was watching television on the couch, which was against the window, I noticed that the light outside turns on. My heart is beating seeing as it's the middle of the woods and people should not be around the house. I looked out and it luckily was just a deer about 20 to 30 feet out by the tree line. Since it was only a deer, I went back to watching my show. Of course the deer was cute. Nothing to be worried about, right? Five minutes passed by and the lights shut off. Still watching Criminal Minds, I gather my blankets and pillows to get ready for bed as I was sleeping in the living room that night. As I'm settling the pillows on the couch and laying the blanket down, a sudden bright flash startled me. It's the motion activated light outside of the living room window. Before I even looked, I thought to myself, it was just a deer again. However, I looked out again reluctantly. There was nothing there. At this point, it was 11.45, almost midnight, and I'm yawning. I go back to organizing my sleep space, and not even 30 seconds later, I hear something clank the window that I had just observed out of. Once again, I turn to check out what the hell just hit the window, and what I saw, I can't even explain rationally. Off to the side by the tree in the yard was the deer again. However, it wasn't the same deer. It looked deformed, almost malnourished. Stomach extremely sunken in and barely any fat on the animal. It just stood there, looking straight at me. 
It felt like it was staring into my soul almost. This deer, if it could even be called a deer, made me feel extremely unsettled and I didn't feel safe. What I saw next made my stomach sink to my feet. The malnourished deer that made me feel such a foreboding and disturbed feeling contorted and ran off on two legs. Two. It went into the woods out of my sight. By this time, I'm absolutely freaking out. My heart is racing and I'm the only one awake. I immediately closed the curtains, ran to make sure the doors were locked and I sat away from the window. Trying to process what I had just seen was troubling. No matter how much I thought about it, I couldn't rationalize what I saw. This deer, literally skin and bone, contorted and folded in ways that are not even capable with normal joint function. The way it ran off on two legs, the way it stared at me before all of it happened, I don't understand it. I did not sleep that night. I ended up going to my aunt's bedroom, telling her what I had seen. She didn't believe me and told me, you're just tired so you're seeing things. I can, ten I can tell you with 100% certainty that is that I saw what I saw. After that night, I refused to stay at my aunt's anymore. And if we would go there for a party, we made sure we left before dusk. I've heard other stories from locals in the area from when they were hunting. I remember one mentioning a tribe or cult that lived in the area off the beaten path. Maybe it was one of them and I was just tired. Maybe not. If anyone has had anything similar, please let me know. I feel crazy because I haven't found anything similar and I can't even talk about it to people because they'll think I'm on drugs. From a young age, I have always had strange dreams. My mother told me I used to sleepwalk. I would scream and cry, then suddenly stop and walk, straight faced, back to my room. One night, even telling my mother, I'm looking for my mom. I haven't been sleepwalking since. Dreams have always been a state of lucidity to me. I'll be sleeping and be aware of it, watching my dream play out in a sort of third person video game, making decisions along the way. If I sleep next to someone, my dreams will get subtle influences from theirs and vice versa. My ex-girlfriend would complain of having strange dreams when we slept together, but when I was gone, she wouldn't dream. Sometimes I will talk in my sleep and hear myself talk from inside my dream, almost like an echo off a cave wall. When I was eight years old, I started having premonition dreams. They only happen to people I have a connection with. My great grandfather was in the Air Force in World War II, and this was my first encounter with premonitions. He was flying a plane and the engine caught fire, crashing the plane and killing him. The last thing from the dream I remember was a shadowy figure standing at the crash site. I got home from school the next day and my grandfather told me that my great grandfather had a heart attack and died before he hit the ground in a supermarket. The second encounter was featuring my eldest aunt. She was giving birth to rocks over and over until she finally gave birth to a star. The star fizzled out, followed by another rock, then two stars the second being weaker than the first. I caught a glimpse of the delivery nurse's face and it was the same shadowy figure. My mother later told me that my aunt was pregnant for the first time after trying for years to get pregnant and having a miscarriage a few months prior. She now has two children. The third encounter by far the most disturbing yet calming encounter I've ever had. I jolt my head up and I'm sitting in a white chair in a white room. A door straight across from me opens and the shadowy figure walks out towards me. He puts his hand on my shoulder, kisses my forehead and turns to leave through the same door. I say he because it felt like a he. The best thing I can describe is that he projected his feelings and emotions onto me. I felt like I recognized him. He seemed to be a few years older than me and felt like family. I spoke to my mother about this, explaining the way he felt in this dream. My mother is not a superstitious woman. 
But as soon as I told her this dream, something in her face changed. She got sullen and her eyes began to tear. She then told me that she had an abortion three years before I was born. One of the more recent encounters had me more concerned than I have ever been in my life. This happened around April 2020, and it was a series of three dreams. Jay, as I've grown to call the shadow figure, stood right behind me in every dream that night, which he has never done before. The first, my youngest aunt collapsed in her son's arms to the floor of her living room, seizing. The second, my younger sister, forearms cut open from wrist to elbow, bleeding out in the bathtub. The third, a house next to a field engulfed in flames with some screaming from inside. I screamed at Jay, begging him to tell me why he was showing me these things. But he just stood there, ever silent and unflinching, letting me feel nothing from him. The next month, my youngest aunt had a stroke at the age of 34, while only her and her son were home. My sister was diagnosed with clinical depression and admitted to cutting herself. And the third dream is still a mystery to me, so either it hasn't happened yet, or there's something more sinister at play. Do you think the shadow figure really could be the spirit of my aborted brother, or something evil that has attached itself to me? Am I in danger of being able to connect to people in my own subconscious? If you have answers, please give me your best. I need to figure out what's going on. This happened to me when I was about four or five. I used to sleep in my parents' bedroom when I was young, being afraid of the dark. I slept on a separate bed, really it was a pillow, on the floor next to my parents' bed. One night, I wake up for some reason and see what is clearly my mom walk at the foot of the bed. I slept in. She walked from one end of the room to the other and out of the door. All the while, she had this very stern look on her face as if she didn't like me staring at her. Now here's the weird part. After my mom walked out the room, I bolted out of bed to see if my mom really got up. There were two shapes in my parents' bed and I jump on top of them just to be sure they were still there. I don't remember if they woke up or not, but in my mind, seeing and feeling two people shaped lumps in the bed meant both were still in bed. To this day, I remember the clothes the clone mom was wearing and what stern look on her face while she walked out of the room. I don't know what this clone could have been, ghost, alien or something, or if I was just having a weird dream. I told my mom this story when I was in my teens and she genuinely freaked out and still is, if it's mentioned. I'm a 31 year old male and recently moved into another neighborhood due to my job. The first week of moving went great. I met my new neighbors and they all seemed friendly, which was good for an antisocial person like me who only lived with a cat. After living in my new house for about two weeks, the, the place became really odd. I would rarely see people outside and even if they did come out, they all seemed scared or in a rush to be somewhere. And if I went to ask them if they were all right, they would all give me those dirty looks as if I had done something to them. I thought the best course of action after a couple of days would be just to get used to it. But after a couple of days, I come back home to find my cat had passed away, which still haunts me to this day. Since I basically spent six years of my life with that cat, what was even more disturbing it wasn't the fact that my cat was dead in front of me. It was the fact that it didn't seem to have a heart attack or health complications. Someone or something could crushed it. I noticed when I went to remove the body, its insides felt liquidy. And the fact that I couldn't even feel any bones inside of it. It just felt like a bag of water. After the cat incident, which occurred four days ago, I noticed that my neighbor's expression changed. It wasn't one of disgust anymore, it was one of pity, which makes me wonder why would they pity me? Did they know something about my cat? If so, how, since I never told anyone about it? 
I feel like I'm slowly losing my mind here. And it feels like I'm just being paranoid and I am reading too much into this. Any advice, please?